Is that your actual palette right there, by the way, before we start? It's a couple of, yeah. Oh, that yeah. one up there oh, in the thing? That was very organized of a palette. <laughs> yeah. A, there's a couple around the corner, too. Oh, yeah. How do you scrape that? With the palette knife? On what? Yeah. It's, it's cool. On what? Yeah, you just got to be really disciplined with that, <laughs> which I never am, especially you with just, wood panels. You just clean it up at the end of the, uh, at the, the end of session. session. Yeah. yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I got to keep these colors for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's how I always uh, feel, but it never ends up I, that way. I keep doing that until I take a week break. You uh, know, like I'm like, yeah. oh, and I, I, I'm not in my studio for like a couple of days. And do then you like I come put back. your palette in like a, the palette Tupperwares and shit and put it in the freezer? And, like I never, save your paint. No, I've never done that either. Do you I've know heard. about those? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Have you? No, I, I don't have a freezer in my um, studio to do that with. Oh, yeah. Poor peasant. <laughs> <laughs> no freezer. I've never really put it in the freezer either, but I <laughs> have used those stupid Tupperwares. They're like specifically for palettes. Yeah, just like a, uh, just like a white Tupperware box with like a blue top for palettes. Why uh-huh. wouldn't you just? Why wouldn't you just? Buy Tupperware. I'm I don't assuming. think they're ever like that big. Yeah, it's kind of a weird it's... dimension. Yeah, Uh-oh. to fit okay. it that size. Yeah, yeah. I know which one you're talking about. It's the, the Masterson Stay Wet palettes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I did like an Alyssa Monk's workshop way oh. back, and that's when I found out about those. Oh, okay. And also, she's like freezes her paint piles and stuff. Oh, does she? <laughs> yeah. She has a shitload of paint, though, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a name. Alyssa, yeah. Alyssa Monk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a name. Josh knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I've heard um, words like that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa Monk. Those are words I know. <laughs> um, all right. We should probably get going. All right. Oh, we haven't started yet? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll leave this part in. We'll see. <laughs> our only art advice. That's like our biggest, probably, critique. We really? Know, we, <laughs> oh, I guess so. We yeah. never talk that much about art. What is about it? About actual advice? technique. But, yeah, yeah. Actual oh, art. technique? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, just like, yeah. It's not a good conversation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know when you like hold the brush and you just brush it on and then like, yeah. it doesn't go on quite right, so you brush it from the other angle and then you like, hey, there's a little too much paint and you wipe that. And then just, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> P- pictures with our words. <laughs> the, the people that can imagine things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, we could do ASMR of like describing <laughs> yeah. thing. Here, here. my four you, filbert you brush the into the lead white <laughs> mix gently with raw umber green shade. Sorry, I had to change the sound because I didn't know you were using raw umber. <laughs> <laughs> and liquid. <laughs> A little bit of liquid. <laughs> Uh, Sergio's definitely going to leave that in. Uh-huh. I know Sergio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Let's hear this intro, Sergio. All right. It's about to blow your <laughs> mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Waiting to Dry, the premier art podcast for Generation Z. We're about to spill the tea, get on fleek, stay woke, y'all. We're going to get (laughs) V-lit. My name is Sergio Lopez. I'm Josh Lawyer. And I'm Ian Reynolds. (laughs) What's up, man? Hey. Uh, You guys did not prepare me for that intro. I didn't know it. (laughs) (laughs) No one's ever prepared. That's the best part is not preparing. I heard it. I heard it when you heard it. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm never prepared. Did you have that written down? It looked like it. (laughs) I had some of the words. Can can I ask you a question? What does V, what'd you say? V, short for very, lit. Oh, V lit. T for truth, right? Truth. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Testosterone. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Podcast is low T. (laughs) uh, Max is out of here. (laughs) Like, I heard the intro. Uh, I don't need to hear anymore. You've got two studio mates that you work with. So we're in your studio, by the way. In the studio. Awesome. In sunny Fair Hopes Street. <laughs> Don't say your street. Well, there's a lot of houses on the street. Very true. Very true. How long is this street? Are we... I think it's like six blocks or something. Oh. It's pretty short. Mm. Yeah, you whittled it down. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, if you get stalkers, that's not our fault. I'll make you a coffee. Come on over. <laughs> uh, end of that Max Marco uh, album. <laughs> but you live in a, like a super awesome house. 
it's pretty tight. Uh, yeah, it's a historic Victorian. Damn, oh, in like San Francisco, narrowing it down even further. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like uh, geocaching. <laughs> yeah, Don't exactly. find me. There's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, for San Francisco, I think you might be the number one San Francisco art house we've been to. <laughs> yeah, right. probably. Uh, yeah. So you won that. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, uh, so Is give, there a prize? Give it to him. <laughs> His prize. <laughs> His prize. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that That's, sweet sound. You can take that with you forever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. The uh, so you as an artist, you were kind of a triple threat, is what people like to call you. <laughs> you yep, I've been, I've been hearing that. <laughs> to you, Lauren Hill. <laughs> Who else we got? Um, God. I can't remember Johnny Depp. I'm sure he's probably <laughs> oh, got sure. three three skills. Three skills. But yeah, you're so you're a tattoo artist. Yep. But the way I met you was we had a show together. Correct so at you, Wonderland, right? At Wonderland, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And I just heard about you. I think uh, like the week before we interviewed, uh, or a little bit before we interviewed um, Emilio, and he was like, "Oh, I think my buddy's doing the show with you." And I'm like, "Really?" Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Sounds about right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. The you had all the biggest pieces. Yeah, I got thrown on that show real last minute <laughs> because people weren't bringing enough art. I guess and then it was like guilty. Uh, <laughs> I got introduced to her through our, my friend uh, Anthony, and mm-hmm. she was like, "Oh, you're so sweet. Like, do you want to have paintings here?" And I was like, "Sure." And, and she's like, "Oh, I've got a show coming up with a couple artists. Like, if you want to bring a few pieces over." And I invited her to come here and check out so you can just pick whichever ones you want to bring right so she came through and was like i'll take that one that one that one and it's like a six foot by four foot <laughs> like a four foot by three foot and uh-huh. like, Damn. And i was like really <laughs> okay and then you walk in and it's just like giant painting it was <laughs> yeah. cool because uh they'd never that one had never been displayed before because uh-huh. i like finished it right when i was finishing my apprenticeship and kind of like started tattooing a lot and also like six foot by four foot canvas you can't fit in anything besides like a passenger van or like right. a moving truck, you can't fit it in like a like a, a normal you know, vehicle, like a normal even like a fucking minivan. You can't fit it in. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was able to walk the canvas from here to right. there. Yeah, which is pretty nice. <laughs> Hell yeah! That's and awesome. I actually brought it to uh, my room in the tattoo shop up at Castro Tattoo, uh-huh. and I walked it from the mission all the way up to Castro, like past Dolores Park, like this <laughs> giant. Six foot by four foot canvas, just holding onto the stretchers in the back. And, uh, and what was on this one? Uh, it's a lady. It's a friend of mine who's like laying on this like uh, mossy rock n- yeah, naked, yeah. you know, trying oh, to keep uh-huh. up. Yeah, and there's like, like arch back or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the sky is getting all like green and mm-hmm. uh, like warpy. So I was walking that down and people just like would intentionally not look at me or the painting when they walk by. They're just like, look the other way and like hold their head very stiffly. And the only people that commented on it were like the homeless people out by Dolores Park and like, that's rad, man. (laughs) Like, who painted that? I like, I know where my fans are. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you give you them your, your card niche. and you say, when you turn yeah. your life around, yeah. <laughs> remember me. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it was the lowest point in my life. I saw this painting and uh, that's when I knew I hit rock bottom. <laughs> That's a fine help. <laughs> or it's the thing is, like, I realized I really wanted to collect art. Yeah, to make a bunch of money so I could buy that painting I saw. <laughs> uh... <laughs> But Except uh, if you're listening out there, homeless friends at Dolores Park, yeah, Fair Oaks Street. Hey, and, <laughs> but it's not a ghost for you. I mean, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> that might be the new like market no one's ever broken into. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, like for me, I, I don't paint big. So is that just like pretty comfortable for you? No, I've only done two paintings that big, and mm. and part of it was like um. I just kind of the normal size I started on was like two foot by three foot ish, uh-huh. or maybe a little smaller, like 20 inches by 30 inches. Mm-hmm. And I've always uh, stretched my own canvases and done like linen on stretchers just because that's how I learned from my friend. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't ever realize that like you should do standard sizing for framing purposes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Until I was like, oh, like where are the frames for 30 by 32? <laughs> and the yeah. half. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that when I, did my first six foot by four foot painting uh i don't know what possessed me to do it yeah. but I, it was such an, like a massive undertaking that i was underprepared for and like <laughs> making the whole thing feel homogenous is like 
incredibly hard. And right, you gotta learn how to market that. How to market like, uh, you know, they build these standard frames, but I can't be fit into a frame. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I don't frame my art. <laughs> yeah, I'm too. <laughs> you can't fit me in that yeah, box. Yeah, you can't yeah. put me in a box. Don't put me in my box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, even the size of your because I paint. I feel like a, like like your standard size is like painting big today uh-huh. or this week or yeah. You know, so but that's all. Like, so I haven't been painting a lot. To be honest, it's a weird. You guys caught me at a weird time. <laughs> be on like a painting podcast. You okay, man? So been, uh, <laughs> no, I mean tattooing's uh tattooing's tattooing's wild. That's a creative uh, outlet. Um, yeah, and it's it an art just, form. It's kind of it, no, it's definitely art. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think of, you know, you guys are both painters, uh-huh. and uh, yeah. and we're like that surrounded by both paintings. And I'm like, oh yeah, painting. That's hit, cool. Can you hit stop, Sergio? <laughs> 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 I was wondering why your wrist looks so weak. <laughs> yeah, there's no way, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you think ta- you think painting is hard? Try tattooing. Your like, yeah. hand's gonna fall off. Uh, very true. Very true. <laughs> you a shaking heavy machine <laughs> instead of a paintbrush and. Uh, you got to stretch the canvas as you go, uh-huh. you know? <laughs> yeah. The tattooing in general, like, uh, is kind of an interesting thing, especially for like you and your work is I feel like your work you've, it seems like sometimes you can fall into like the, you know, do the standard art, like the standard tattoo style, which no, no beef to that at mm-hmm. all. But like, you seem to have a very defined, this is me Ian mm-hmm. in my work. Like, uh, how does that, Yeah, is that just natural? Uh, no, definitely. I mean, like, yes and no. Uh, I think because like you, you're like, yeah, triple threat. Like I've done. So I went to school for, I went <laughs> to school people for, are saying, not just yeah, me. so people around town are saying I'm triple threat, uh-huh. whatever. It might be true. I'd say it's more like a quad threat <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> like, Sorry I was a pretty that. avid skateboarder when I was younger, <laughs> okay. you know? Okay. Um, but then I got really into music. So skateboarding, doing music stuff, went uh-huh. to music school for classical guitar. Okay. Uh-huh. And then, uh. Oh, wow. And then I was, guitar. <laughs> was like, you know, going crazy doing that. So then I started like a psychedelic synth pop band with my friend uh-huh. as like rebellion to what I was forced to, st- or not forced to study, but I was like, you know, harnessed into, uh-huh. um, and then started getting into painting. Like I had a good friend who is a, like, it was actually my bandmate's brother, uh, who's like this excellent oil painter. And he is in a program at, um, Northwestern uh-huh. for oil painting, like a master MFA program for oil painting. And um, I got put in touch with him through an ex and uh, and like met him and went to a studio and like took LSD for the first time. Okay. And I was like, oh, painting's super cool. <laughs> and um, Like the first day you met him? Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Well, we had been pen pal, like psychedelic pen pals okay. for a bit. You know, was, uh, he was like a strange older man I met, you know. He didn't get we're catfished. Pen pals. Well... Did he look like his pictures? He, he did. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I'd seen a picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that's kind of how I got like introduced to painting, or uh-huh. introduced into like thinking about doing it, and also where I learned a bunch of like the technical aspects, like how to build a canvas, like what paints to use, like, right. how, what to mix paint with. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I don't know how I got off the rails on this one a bit, <laughs> but anyways, right. um, yeah, I got into painting, and then got into tattooing more recently mm-hmm. so it's oh. all like how long has that been it's been like two and a half years since i've been oh. tattooing full-time it's so oh. pretty young right yeah. in the tattoo yeah. world still definitely like in its infancy i think mm-hmm. for de- oh yeah so for developing a style that's what it was getting back to is that like mm-hmm. i feel like i've done a bunch of things so like no kind of like you have to decide what your stuff's going to be before someone else decides for you kind right. of thing mm-hmm. and like um and like trying to intentionally not be broad i think that's like mm-hmm. something that i learned from all of the other experiences i've had mm. oh really by the time yeah. when i started tattooing i like knew from getting into it that like like I, I taught music lessons for like 10 years like guitar lessons and all this stuff and um when i did an apprenticeship or one of i did three apprenticeships but when i did the last one you're supposed to learn how to tattoo decently in like every style like traditional american traditional like right. more japanese style more like black work more like realism all that Mm -hmm. and as soon as i heard that it definitely like didn't vibe with me because uh like as a music teacher if you told me you wanted to learn gypsy jazz guitar and blues guitar and rock guitar and metal guitar and folk and country it's like there's no possible like it's one of those things is like a lifetime worth of (laughs) of effort and Mm -hmm. like dedication so with tattooing i like immediately was like no i'm not doing that i'm gonna Mm -hmm. like narrow it down 
and do something that like a the, i think the medium like works well with right because mm-hmm. initially i wanted to do like oil paint my oil painting stuff with tattooing right and that's like why people gave me a chance for <laughs> apprenticeships too because they're like oh your paintings are sick yeah if you could do tattoos <laughs> like that um you know you'll you'll make my shop a bunch of money basically yeah. was like what the motivation there was uh-huh. and then i started tattooing or like even like learning about it you know and like looking at tattoos and looking how they heal and all that and i was like right like what makes a good in my my opinion uh what makes a good like realism piece is like the final 10 mm-hmm. percent where it's like the highlights in the right place right. and like the really the subtleties are like just so mm-hmm. and then a tattoo it's like you get like some sun over the summer and all of those like final touches kind of get like <laughs> w- like mm, they fade down. away and then it just kind of like so what made it a really killer piece is kind of now it's just like loses that edge right kind of, yeah, yeah, where totally it's like that. yeah so it's kind of like you know you when you leave a, when you finish a painting you like do the best you fucking can and then you're like all right i better not touch it because it's only going to get worse or right. mm-hmm. um and then it stays that way like forever <laughs> Versus yeah. like a tattoo, you get it as good as you can, <laughs> and then like it just starts to degrade immediately upon being finished, right. which is true of like all tattoos. But yeah, yeah. once you take it out of the shop, right, it loses fifty percent of mm-hmm. its value. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it loses all value, <laughs> all value as soon as you pay the person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Just bought it. Uh, yeah, no returns, I guess. Eh? But yeah, I don't know, exactly. if, like, if I have like a like a recognizable style as far as paintings go but i think the tattooing definitely I like i don't know you if you, do. you think I, so i mean i, if... uh, I haven't known your work for that long but even the minisha i could i mean well one of them is a self-portrait mm-hmm. but the other one it's like oh there's ian mm-hmm. <laughs> even yeah. your palette i think for a bit i can kind of tell yeah you definitely. use a lot more greens than i mean i never use that much green so I'm, yeah and and you uh flesh out tones a lot and like you like the like um what is it like the patchiness of tones which yeah, or yeah. The skin tones which yeah, i yeah, like totally. too but yeah i could see i could see that in your work for sure yeah i painted with emilio a couple times like at his studio and uh-huh. uh and that was like when i noticed that i did that uh-huh. because he like smooths things out so much uh-huh. and sure. i was like wait but like and he's like no that looks like shit i'm like oh shit that's like all i do is just like <laughs> like really patchy and Maybe it's because, like, I have a lot of green in my skin. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, like, uh. really pale and so a bunch of, like, green and blues. I'm like, yeah, that's what skin looks like, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely could see your work. It's, but, like, I don't know. I, I, I haven't been tested, I guess, enough. But I, I think for sure you have a defined style. Okay. But uh, it seems, I mean, I don't know. For most artists, that's a question I got recently about how do you – develop a style mm-hmm. i was like i don't know that's a really weird question yeah it's, it's like, like you it's don't a, yeah you just do you boo boo <laughs> um the late kevin hart <laughs> uh, but yeah well, i mean what do you think how did you guys get led into your own styles because sergio especially yours i mean i've seen your work since i moved to the bay like six years ago and i feel like i could pick yours out mm-hmm. easily ever since i saw the first one right S- sergio was created in a lab <laughs> yeah <laughs> i didn't answer that for you <laughs> go ahead yeah, i was built in a shop <laughs> <laughs> like drago from rocky <laughs> oh, what's that? Uh, oh okay i get what you're saying drago from mm-hmm. rocky five yeah sorry <laughs> i thought you were doing a robot like i will uh, break you <laughs> that's Sir. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice. uh, there's a Rocky Five up fan out there. That's fucking. He's really cool. dodging that Killing question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting <laughs> Josh uh, do his thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean the stuff that I'm most known for the the roses stuff is like kind of something I came to a little bit by happenstance, mm-hmm. like. Um, I worked with a model who had a lot of tattoos on her back that had rose tattoos. And she had, um, uh, for the shoot, I didn't even really know what, what I was going to do with it. But um, she brought to the shoot this, this um, like, sort of shawl that had, like, vintage rose pattern on it. And we just, like, tacked it up on the wall and used it as a background. <laughs> and I was already doing some stuff where I was merging the... Um, the figure in the background. Mm-hmm. So that just ended up working out between like her rose tattoos and the vintage rose pattern. Yeah. It just really like, it really worked very well for her. And I've found a way to like kind of adapt it to, to other 
models I was working so with. So it's like an accident that somebody else brought into your studio and you're like, that's my fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's the answer for everyone that's asked you that question, right? It's yeah. like, uh, wait for it. And, the way I answered yeah. the question though, was I just said like, it's a, it's like a combination of all the, like you trying to solve the problem of how do I want to uh-huh. paint this? And there was something else. I've, there was like the two determining factors of just how I think my style develop is just like, I don't know how to do something. Let me figure out how to problem solve, how I should figure this out. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I do it that way. And then another thing is just me enjoying a part of the process and that kind of taking a forefront to other things, you know, it's like, Oh, well, I really enjoy these things. So I kind of make more effort to like pursue those things. Yeah. At least for me, that's, and then like kind of finding the, parts that you don't hate to do or the parts that you're like oh right. that's actually fun <laughs> yeah, instead of exactly. like tedious or like <laughs> yeah 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 that's what i feel like about just all of the art like when i say art i mean like music and art and or music and like visual art and mm-hmm. tattooing and all the stuff is just like uh finding your styles like all every part of art is like tedious and horrible right. but like there are certain ones that like you're blind to that you can just do forever like mm-hmm. like i can do like stippling stuff like endlessly and i find oh, it really, really fun but huh. then like other things like i find very like tedious and i like kind of like lose my mind doing That's it crazy. so i like that kind of like pushes your style because you're just like yeah. oh i'm just gonna do the part that i like like to do and see how like if people <laughs> let me get away with that <laughs> stippling uh, is like uh me pulling my hair out <laughs> I, I would prefer i don't like stippling with anything but a tattoo machine though like oh, i don't like doing it with like a pen <laughs> yeah like, i started when i was an apprentice and i'd like do drawings like that and it was miserable but i was like oh, it looks cool but even like your work the patchiness i'm assuming yeah. is almost like a form of stippling in a weird way yeah it's hmm. definitely like i feel like i've always kind of like hid behind rendering uh-huh. like i was like rendering is my crutch and it's like yeah it looks like shit but if you give me a hundred million hours with it i'll just like <laughs> hide all of that behind a right. bunch of stuff <laughs> yeah are you are you trying to go away from that at all are you well with painting I, i've been taking kind of like a a little hiatus and uh i don't know kind of thinking about like what i want from it mm-hmm. now that like everything's because i was trying to make like a career out of painting for a while yeah. and um I'm definitely not trying to make a career out of it right now, but I definitely want to keep painting, want to keep showing and right. all that, but I don't want to like necessarily try and harness it for an income because right. I have like tattooing is like my thing that I can rely on that for. And, right. Uh, so then it, it's interesting because it like asks all the questions over again. It's like, what do you actually want to do? Right. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then also like timing wise, um, like I think I got ahead of myself when I started painting and like rendering stuff like rendering way over rendering and then you get a lot of like positive feedback from a lot of people for mm-hmm. like over rendering stuff and then that just makes mm. like a loop of like you just doing right. it and it's like sure. only good for o- for over rendering <laughs> and then um, so you think you were doing it because of like compliments rather than enjoyment of the process no i think i truly enjoyed it but it was like as i was learning how to do it mm-hmm. but it was looking pretty good early on so right. like and this was just me like figuring out what paint was and stuff and like yeah. how to use it and then kind of having to like unlearn a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it goes back like to music for me too. Like when I'd take on a student or something, or even when I was a student, um, you know, you like have a clear vision before you ever played of you like making, or in my case, like of making music of like making songs and like being a band and all that stuff. But then you start learning the technical elements of it. And then you go off the rails with like learning arpeggios and like learning how to do these scales. And that was like never the point. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like it's like that with all art. Like you can get really sucked into technical stuff. Right. And like, sure. and it's almost like a crutch because it's like very safe. And you know, if right. you like put in the hours and put in like right. that, like, you know, that step by step thing, you're going to have a pretty solid result. Right. Whereas like it's more daring to like, experiment and to like do something that you don't know if it's going to look like shit right. you don't know if like anyone's going to like and you don't even mm-hmm. know if you like it but that's like the more exciting stuff right. you know, usually but, uh, another question with that is is that is that also you trying to fulfill that re- reward system of like i'm kind of living on the edge do you know what i mean yeah. like there's also that like dilemma of like is am i doing this to enhance the painting and like really develop at least for me what i'm trying to say mm-hmm. in a uh, in my own pain uh, or is it just like i'm kind of like that reward system of living on the edge of hmm. destruction and creating you know that's like more alive right it's like yeah. when you're 
on the edge between <clears throat> those two things. Mm-hmm. And I also think like um, I didn't have enough deadlines when mm-hmm. I was painting too. And like when I when I actually would get in shows, which is pretty rare or is pretty rare, um, like that would always be helpful, <laughs> you know, because you'd like be like, "Fuck, I only right. have like uh, two weeks left, and like it needs to be dry or before I send it over." Yeah. And then you have to like you have to make cuts and you have to decide like where you're going to render and where you're not and where you're going to like be rough and where you're not mm-hmm. and like also like account for days that like aren't linear progress too you're like okay it's not going like start to finish it's going like two steps forward one step backwards like three steps forward seven steps backwards (laughs) um and i feel like all good art needs a lot of struggle to make it good like Mm. you can't have like a good like i mean an okay piece can like be like just made like start to finish right but if it's like a beautiful something that's like really beautiful and like resonates to the human like being like Mm -hmm. it needs to like be a lot of struggle and conflict (laughs) and I had to be like a bitch of a journey to get there. Right. <laughs> right. Huh. Is that, know. you think that's based on like the narrative you think, or is that just the, str- the struggle through like as an artist? I think it reads, create? I think it reads in the art or in the music or anything like that. Like not knowing the backstory, but I think it just reads if, right. it, if there is like struggle to get hmm. there. What I mean is like, um, <clears throat> like as far as struggle, do you mean like that the painting was a like hard as in like, it's just, I'm I'm having to rework things and figure things out as I go, or is it more like, like not necessarily like the backstory, but maybe like the story influencing the art. I don't know if that makes any sense. I feel like it's like a, um, like if you had building or like baking instructions, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, instruction one, do this. Instruction two, do that. When it gets really formulaic, right. then it like it come it comes across as like dead and formulaic because mm-hmm. it is too much. Like you just did step one, step two, step three, and, and right. Uh, and I feel like with painting, sometimes it could fall into that trap for me, like especially mm. working from like photo references and uh-huh. stuff. Yeah. And you get too comfortable with the process and it like, beca- like also like, uh, I feel like I would get really excited on the designing phase where I'd like mm-hmm. take a bunch of photos and like do a lot of editing and like kind of trying to figure out like what composition I want to make. And that was like the most creative part was mm-hmm. like doing the designing. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. it'd be like, I'd pick one and I'd like, figure out what the dimensions of the canvas I need to build were. And then it was like, okay, now mm-hmm. fill out the strut. Like is like being a like long, very delayed printer where it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. step one, right. d- yeah. get supplies, step two, stretch canvas, step three, prime, stretch four. Uh-huh. I three totally three. understand what yeah. you're saying. Cause that's pretty much what the painted roses stuff turned into for me. It was really formulaic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It yeah. just like go through the motions of like almost paint by numbers yeah. sort of thing. But yeah, it's that's, tough because yeah. it takes a long time for like I think for the audience to catch up to where you're at. Mm-hmm. So the, by the time like if you're too hasty with like moving on to like the next thing that's new and not formulaic, mm-hmm. like it never gives an audience a chance to like get a feel for what you're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought a lot about like uh, recently an analogy of like how when you see a band play, you almost always want them to play like the first album right. that you yeah. love all the songs from. Mm-hmm. But they're like trying to tour the new music that they're making mm-hmm. or the new album that they're touring, right? But by the time they're playing the new album, they already have a new album done <laughs> and they're like, you know, it's in like line to be released next year. So they're already huh. playing like old stuff right. that is their new stuff that you're like still not even on board with. <laughs> right. And it's huh. like, if but you think about that, at the same with, like, time, painting, it would be really nice. Yeah to tour your paintings more than once yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like right. maybe i don't know maybe it'd be torture if you're like oh remake these like <laughs> me- remake this like famous paint or this paint that was super successful of yours or whatever <laughs> no like, no what i mean is like can i show this painting if it doesn't sell at the other gallery oh, yeah. Like, yeah. right yeah. like it's still a good painting uh-huh. mm-hmm. and if it's in like denver rather than san francisco it's not like the same crowd is looking at it I always wonder that that's like a weird thing for me is like I created something that took a lot out of me. Like it's like a, an idea that I developed and worked on for a long time. And if I'm really happy with it, it's like I should be able to show this multiple times to multiple and, crowds. And you don't find you're allowed mm-hmm. to the like, galleries aren't into you doing that. I feel like there is like this pressure to like have new work. Well, I think consumerism obsession yeah. with the new model, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's stupid. Is, yeah. Super stupid. Uh, you know, but whatever. I can just, I'm just going to bitch and moan all the rest of my days. <laughs> uh, but th- that is the advantage that music has. You know, it's like, I always compare ourselves to comedians a bit. It's just that they have the joke and once you hear it, you can't rehear it. It's not funny anymore. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like a weird thing. Mm. Where uh, I never thought about painting 
comedian <laughs> combo. That's actually really, I think, a good analogy, uh-huh. or a good comparison. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I interrupted you, and I fucking don't know where we were, we were at. Oh, that's, that's good. Get, <laughs> it's better than the... whatever I was saying. <laughs> uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> we were somewhere. Sergio? <laughs> it was about the process. Oh, yeah, the it, process. So <laughs> with uh, so I found that like I really love the designing phase. Mm-hmm. And uh, with tattooing, I've like been able to like really embrace like designing. Because mm-hmm. I'll do like... I mean, I'll do like 20 or 30 designs every week. Right. Um, whereas like with paintings, I was doing like one or two a month. And I mm-hmm. might be doing like some for future paintings. But I was really trying to do like one painting at a time or two, like one or two. And then mm-hmm. a couple instances where I had like three or four going. But like I just really wanted to like get pieces finished so they wouldn't like lie around 70% done. Right. And then it gets distracted and start a new one. Um, but yeah, I'd be like, you know like in any painting session you have like a dozen ideas for other paintings you want to make but you mm-hmm. have to like kind of like brush those off because otherwise you'll never make anything because right. you're like you know start the next one and you're like oh wait but it'd be really sweet to do this and you start that painting mm-hmm. and then you just have like a yeah mm-hmm. so like with tattooing i'm actually like i feel like kind of coming close to designing in real time you know where i'm like right. oh mm. like this would be cool and then finish that drawing and like start the next one uh-huh. yeah um and also, like, finding that, like, I'm able to, I've, like, been able to, like, embrace the motifs and, like, really, like, ride them out where, like, because I'm excited by them still. And I'll just kind of, like, use similar similar elements, like, over and over again. Mm-hmm. But not because I feel like it's going to be, like, a surefire seller. It's going to be, like, a hit. But just because, like, it's still an interesting design mm-hmm. element to me, mm-hmm. which is maybe, like, kind That's of what like, you're yeah. thinking about with the roses where it's, like, you're not bored of it. So you can just keep, you're, like, genuinely doing it because you want to, not because, mm-hmm. like, you know, like... Yeah, there's yeah. things I pick out of it that I am still really into. Like, I I do still like the the idea of the of the vintage roses, but um, for me now, when I go back to do a painting of those, I try and look at different ways of how to, how I paint them. Like, uh, uh, usually, well, in the past, I've always done it where just like a the pattern on the tone of the the background color and just kind of almost draw it in as a and then um this last one that i did i did it where i just did it like patches of color that i then carved into and made it into the shape of the pattern i just found that a more interesting way to solve the same problem yeah Mm -hmm. being like more are you feel like you're getting looser or tighter Uh, yeah i'm purposely forcing myself to get looser in the parts that have traditionally been tighter (laughs) (laughs) working real hard (laughs) set it it up (laughs) knock it down (laughs) Uh, well josh you feel like i feel like you still you render a lot yeah yeah i mean i I love it it. uh one thing for me that's kind of interesting is like uh i've been really getting into just drawing non-stop yeah i've seen all the time lapses (laughs) yeah Yeah. and uh for me it's like this weird thing now we're like painting it's almost like it's kind of similar i I don't know if it's similar to what you're going through but it's my own i guess thing where it's like uh, looking at a painting it's almost like i need the the idea to be worth the paint and the time yeah mm-hmm. it's like a weird thing so now drawing is like i can just knock out an idea knock out an idea yeah, knock out an idea yeah i feel like uh ever since starting there's been like a block with painting where like just the materials is like a hurdle that's hard mm-hmm. to get over so it's hard mm. to experiment with it because it's like i'd make my own canvases and stretch them and prime them and right. sand them so it take like you know a mm. week to like get a paint ready canvas so then Mm -hmm, if you do like a single a la prima session on it and you're like really liking how it looks and you just want to leave it like half done Mm -hmm. you spent seven days as many making the canvas you can't just (laughs) leave it so i was always looking for like a way to sketch paintings Mm -hmm. and i like primed paper and like did canvas paper and like got uh panels and that was actually um the thing that actually kind of worked was just getting uh the like freestanding little like wood panels and just painting directly on those mm-hmm. and like the jessa bores and all that yeah but it's weird because then if you're you know you treat it like sketching and you can come up with really cool concepts but a lot of times it'd be like on an, an inferior surface that mm-hmm. you can't even like you could never show and you couldn't sell because it's like too like you know it's going to fall apart or it's just mm-hmm. like a really mm-hmm. gross texture of like like 
this canvas paper it has a disgusting texture and just like yeah it looks terrible like this would have been cool if i like painted it on something that was a decent surface there's some guy listening who only uses canvas papers like yeah it's disgusting yeah that's right <laughs> yeah yeah it's it is though it's so bad <laughs> um, uh yeah yeah i feel like yeah it's hard to it's hard to experiment i think with it you know and yeah. like yeah it is, I don't know, and maybe that's a, just a flaw in thinking, though, too, is, like, just because it takes the effort, uh, you should not You should treat it uh, precious yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's just the flaw. Uh, but and there is something, too, about, like, being loose and free with things that make things awesome, and then when you try to, like, develop that idea, you, you sometimes lose that magic, you know, where it's, yeah. like... Uh, it just isn't working because like often you lose that magic, right? Like, yeah. yeah. I think like back to, back to music. I've been thinking a lot about like, um, triple threat. Yeah. You know, how like, how like a band almost always like that first <clears throat> album is so good. And mm-hmm. they had like the band recorded with like the shittiest equipment right. and like really bad circumstances by the, like on their own in like a bedroom. Yeah. And then it catches on, everyone loves it. And then they get like, you know, a record deal and get like, all like they get money to make this next record and right. it's like super promising they're like we can get all that shit we wanted we can get like the nice guitar and the nice like tape to tape machine and all like get a good producer mm-hmm. and then with all of the stuff that they wanted to make the thing that they wanted to make it like no it actually like isn't good at all right, it's like yeah. they needed that limited palette mm-hmm. you think that's um, what it is partly i think so i think it's also it's like when you don't know that you have a bunch of eyes on you i think that's vital mm. yeah it's also probably like the hunger you know what i mean like yeah the, like the like the struggle you were saying earlier it's like you need you need difficulty in your life sometimes to like bring out shit that mm-hmm. comfort mm. might not give you right you need something to push against a little yeah bit. maybe but that's like a the, like the sophomore sophomore album or sophomore like work right it's mm-hmm. kind of like the hardest because you already have a bar established right. and you have to like meet it it's always weird with music though too because i know like at least i'm drawing from rap knowledge but i know like a lot of rappers they, it's like a lifetime worth of songs that they mm-hmm. put into they whittle down into like a a first album yeah mm-hmm. and then the second album's like that first one was great now like <laughs> fit a lifetime worth of music yeah. into the second one yeah like well, even the comedy later, two years later or something. <laughs> yeah the comedy analogy fits there too like yeah. comedian is always talking about yeah those jokes on my first album took 10 years to make and then right. the second album it's like two years yeah. or whatever yeah. and you're probably like <laughs> they're probably like touring that whole time too it's not like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i mean like so like solo shows for painting it's like crazy to be able to pump like a new one out show after show yeah oh, yeah. yeah but i think uh i've always been i wish i could just like uh have a cleared out studio because i think that's the real motivation to like make mm. a bunch of new paintings i like have mm. no more room to put paintings anywhere well you can give me one yeah. we can <laughs> trade you, if you want i know which one you want <laughs> <laughs> uh, for our listeners um we're standing right in front of uh one of your big pieces yeah, and six foot uh, by four foot and it's uh well most it's always interesting when artists paint like self-portraits but I think you might be the first artist we've had on that's painted a self nude. <laughs> so it's it's like we're it's nice to be a first yeah, on the show. Yeah. It's like the um you know, the imagine who you're talking to is naked. Like I don't I don't even have to try that hard now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just have to imagine you guys so I'm comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so it's like a giant painting that um it's called self portrait as a hedonist. So I'm like lying on the floor with a big pillow, naked. Um, holding a giant like glass of wine and there's like mm-hmm. a hookah on the table and it's an aerial shot so it's like mm-hmm. a like you know god's eye perspective right um, ceiling fan ceiling fan perspective yeah <laughs> that's i should start using that because i don't really like the whole god thing <laughs> okay ceiling fan praise <laughs> ceiling fan <laughs> um, but i i would so i painted i was telling these guys earlier i was painting uh a lot of my i never have had real models uh-huh. so mm-hmm. i've always gotten like friends or acquaintances to model right. and um and then i'd like probably present well, you've never these paintings. Asked this real model as not me. yet the night's <laughs> the night's still young sorry about to go on. <laughs> um but yeah so i'd make these paintings of like friends and they'd you know be like nudes and uh 
then I'd probably have him up at like a art show and then other friends, mutual friends would like know them and be like, oh, look, there you are naked. <laughs> right. And uh, I felt like I had to, you know, kind of like own up and do one of me so I could like share in the embarrassment <laughs> right. and like, um, vulnerability. <laughs> Pretty that brave it? of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Dude, I want a sound painting. You got to show me how to do that. <laughs> um, that painting actually is what got me into Odd Nerdrums, though. Oh, really? I went to study with him, yeah. Oh, shit. You yeah. studied with Odd Nerdrum? Yeah. Wow. In like, uh, I think about four years ago. No shit. Uh-huh. Huh. Yeah. I, uh, so I first moved to the Bay Area from Chicago like six years ago. And we had just gotten in like, a couple months and uh, a friend of a friend in Chicago or a friend in Chicago is in town and he's like, Oh, we got to go to this art show. It's a friend of mine who studied with Odd Nerdrum. And I was mm. like, take me there. Cause I've <laughs> known about his right. work since before I even painted. And he was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Just, you know, one of my f- favorites like idols. And, mm-hmm. um, and I was like, yeah, let's go. And right. I went and saw uh, this painter, David Molesky. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had a show in San Francisco. Uh, I can't remember the gallery name. It's like, is in the mission is at the small like up second story gallery okay. went there and saw the paintings and um tried to talk to him with like little success and then after we like all went out somewhere and got drinks and i was like talking to him more about it and he was like listen if you want to talk to me about odd nerd i'm saying i'm like packing up my studio tomorrow to move to new york you can help me pack it huh. and i'll tell you about it <laughs> so i'm like showed up right and early and i was like all right tell me all about it mm-hmm. and um and kind of like got the scoop from him and uh and i was just like man i'd love to do that i'd love to go out there and even just like to meet him mm-hmm. i've never even seen a painting of his in real life i've only seen like the reproduction books you know okay. mm-hmm. um and he was like yeah I'll, you know i'll give you their email or like give you their address like write them a letter saying that you want to come study and that was like right around the time that the Adnerdrum School book, like art book, came out. I don't know if you mm-hmm. guys ever saw that, but it's no, like there's um, so. all these people that had studied with him. So it's okay. like a book of their painting, of like mm-hmm. paintings from them, and cool. some of like odds and a bunch of like writing. Um, and that came out, I think, like right after I met David. And I was like, oh shit, like I missed the chance, like words out, this thing's established, like there's no way I'm going to like get in. Right. So I wrote this letter, and they're like, you need to take like actual pictures of your paintings so i had to like go get them printed at walgreens like the <laughs> like pictures of paintings done and uh mm-hmm. wrote a letter and sent it off and then was it handwritten too yeah it was, handwritten. It was? Yeah. holy shit <laughs> and uh, i didn't hear anything back and it took like six months and then i guess you have to send it on a raven i f- believe i did a pigeon okay <laughs> uh, um and then, i heard back early if it was yeah, a raven yeah <laughs> And then the uh, his wife Turid emailed me like six months later and was like, "Oh yeah, like do you have any um, do you have any self portraits? Like an email is fine." So like, oh. and I was working on this painting, and I sent. I'm like, "All right, here it goes. I'm just gonna send him a giant <laughs> painting of me nude." Like, <laughs> yeah. okay. and I sent it over, and I was like, "Yeah, it's gonna be like another picks. six months." And uh, and then they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, sorry. Like, you know, we we don't have any room." Blah blah. And she emails me the next day, and she's like, "Okay, you can come now if you want." Oh. And I was like, "Oh shit, looks like I'm going to Norway." <laughs> and, um, the wife was into yeah. it, and we weren't we weren't <laughs> yeah. married yet, and. uh <laughs> And I was like, hey, Sam, like, I, I got to go do this. I don't know how long it is. And she's like, all right, you got it. You definitely have to go do that. Um, so I wound up going for three months. Okay. And uh, huh. and it was fucking wild. Yeah. It was really cool. It was nothing that I thought it was going to be. And I, like, learned a bunch of bunch of other stuff. It was mm-hmm. kind of similar. Like, you're talking about no one ever wants to talk about technique here. Like, yeah. he also would not have it. Like, if you ask him oh, really? any technique questions, do you just, like, turn away? Huh. Um, didn't want to talk about uh, how to make money like that was like kind of like a, a like no no conversation about it, it just wasn't interesting to uh-huh. him you know mm. um, he just really likes to talk about like philosophy and like beliefs like, too. yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I'm oh. gu- guilty of the same I recently got asked to do like an online class and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it I'm like I don't talk about those things <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm doing I don't know how to explain it yeah uh, it's, and it's not interesting to me. Mm-hmm. What's interesting to me is like w- why we paint, you know, mm-hmm. those questions and and what I'm trying to accomplish and say and those things and what 
how do yeah. you develop that as an artist? I think it's fun to talk technical when you're talking with a peer and you're mm-hmm. like, I like to do this. And they're like, I like right. to do that. And you're like, why do you do that? And they're like, what do you, how do, what do you use that for? And then, mm-hmm. cause mm-hmm. it's kind of a dialogue, but I think if right. it's a one way conversation, it's like, uh, it doesn't like spark any, anything to like help you realize, Oh, this is why I do that. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. this turns into that thing. And, yeah. and a lot yeah. of times if I'm going to ask an artist that it's usually because they can't figure out why or how they did it. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. why did you do that? Or how did right. you do that? Just cause I'm like interested in how they, well, what made them go that route yeah. in general. And if there was anything behind it too. So hmm. well, I don't know. <laughs> Technique for me is boring. It's like develop it. It happens over time. Right. But in yeah, the work. It kind of just happens automatically over time. Yeah. Over yeah. time. Right. It's like, yeah. But you yeah. can't you can't make money off that as a curriculum where you're just like, yeah, just do it for 10 years. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. But you still got to pay tuition right now. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's that's got to be a hard thing, too. If When people are like, oh, I started painting when I was like 30. You're like, oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I didn't start painting until I was like 20. I mean, but were you drawing at all or no? Not really. I was, oh, in, mu- like, I was in music school. Oh, yeah. That's not. I feel like it's all connected, though. Like I feel like it's all like one thing. It's did just ever, like, did you ever battle the devil in like a guitar <laughs> with the banjo? Or yeah, what? as every year you did a recital. <laughs> <laughs> so like, uh, all right, so classical music, classical guitar recital. Uh-huh. And you made You're it in a small recital hall. Okay, it's completely dark except for you on the stage. There's one chair, and you're playing this really dense, difficult music by memory. Uh huh. And it's dead silent. It's not like a music show. Like you can hear someone fumbling with the like two sheet um, brochure that says like the the program. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like you can hear someone fold it. It's like right. you can hear a pin sure. drop. Wow! Yeah. And you just go up there, and you you're like wearing a stupid line. shirt with a tie, and you're like all like, uh, and you, you sit down, you don't say a fucking word. Like it's customary. You don't don't say anything. You just sit down and you start playing. And uh, inevitably, like your memory memory goes blank in the middle of a piece. And you're like, "Where am I? What was I playing?" That's um, when you cut to stairway. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> your hands are like shaking, and you're like, "This isn't good." Uh, and that's that was every year, uh, or that was like the last three years. So, so and you never did the, but you never faced that was the, with the devil. That was the devil every time, and always okay. lost. <laughs> uh, what was that movie called? Do you know what you're talking about? It's like Crossroads. Oh, is that what it's called? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, you're probably right with uh, the Karate Kid. Ooh, I don't know. I'm retracting. I don't know. My, I don't, I'm retracting my. I don't know which movie you're talking about. It's about a classical guitarist kid who wants to learn jazz guitar or something like that, and goes to the crossroads and. F- plays against someone to i don't think i've seen it but i feel like it's called crossroads <laughs> <laughs> i think you're right actually i think you're right uh if it's not it should have been <laughs> yeah. uh but yeah that's i mean that's pretty impressive in general mm-hmm. it, did that help at all with art like w- like learning kind I of i feel like that's why i le- was able to pick up painting because mm-hmm. i like to i feel like it's mm-hmm. just like discipline on like how to put hours in for yeah. sure yeah and like uh the music was is so dense. Like you mm-hmm. pick you pick your recital material during the summer before or during the summer, or like right when you show up for the year, and you're picking the music that you're gonna. It's like a solo show where you pick the music you're gonna play at the end of the year, huh? And then you just work on that all year. But you're also doing like all of the regular classes that everyone else does. But that's also like so I was practicing like three to six hours a day, and that was one that was only three credit hours. Wow. And I was taking like you know fifteen to eighteen credit hours uh, every semester. I like had a pretty good regiment. Like I didn't sleep that much. Slept like five hours a night, hmm. and I uh, didn't watch any TV. And I like partied a lot, also. So I just like huh. yeah, just like that's parted awesome. down to all the good stuff. Hmm. And uh, and then when I got into painting, when I realized like because I had this friend Ryan Schultz, who's a very good painter, um, and I he was like an informal uh mentor basically mm-hmm. um did he and, also give you drugs yeah that's the same guy oh okay. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but uh so basically just learning to paint was just painting while he was painting and i would be painting from like painting from a photo reference trying mm-hmm. to like paint it and then be like oh man like this nose looks like shit and i'd be like am i do- like what what do i need to do and he'd look at it and be like make it like more like the nose yeah you know or like Stop whatever painting it's very like of shit yeah it's just, <laughs> yeah it's keep working on it it's the same thing we're saying over and over it's just like put in the work you know right. mm-hmm. but just having somebody who's like a who 
you know is skilled at doing what you're trying to do tell you that you're like on the right track and just to keep going like that right. is education and i feel like that's like kind of funny because people make it into so much more but all you need is someone that like looks at what you're doing and is like yeah i see what you're trying to do just keep working at it mm -hmm. and that's like i think you could sum up most art <laughs> lessons like that right like, is you that really how uh, Odd Nerdrum taught? He doesn't. So that's the other thing. It's like going there, you're not going for like lessons or like apprentice. You're not, uh, it's not a mentorship. It's kind of oh. like, it's kind of like a think tank. It's not anything oh. like official, but it's like the way that I interpreted it is that he, um, he just likes, he like has built up this world, this kind of like idealistic world where um, he has people come live there that are like passionate about painting also mm -hmm. um and they, you make paintings there and you have like a little like there's multiple at least when i was there i was in um norway and it's like two hours south of oslo mm -hmm. and um there's this property like on the water and it had a couple houses on it and like they had a family house and then there's like a studio house and there was um the first floor was like a big kitchen with like real cool paintings on the first floor like there's a poussin and there was like a titian like a tiny titian it was a kitchen titian it was like above a sink um God and i actually it. held it in my hands at one point before i knew it was like a real painting <laughs> yeah. they're like oh can you like the uh two sons like had found it somewhere and they like hand it to me and they're like oh yeah like where are we gonna put this or what should we frame it with and then i was like w they're like oh yeah that's a titian and i was like a, a titian titian <laughs> did um, you say that that work was bitching. It was bitching, tishing. <laughs> In the kitchen. Kitchen, bitching, tishing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so yeah, so like there is like a couple, maybe three rooms, like tiny rooms with tiny beds in them. And that's like where the guests would stay. Um, and people had like the David, David had stayed there, I think for like two years. So it's like, mm -hmm. you can, it's kind of a very like loose, at least it was, it was a very like loose thing. Um, and you help out, like, you model for him because he paints everything from life. So That's if, why they chose you, I see. I, <laughs> you never even wanted me. I modeled, like, a foot a couple times oh, really? and, like, my hand on a self-portrait for him. <laughs> uh, he And so there was, like, oh. there's two other students when I was there, um, when I first got there, but, like, more came and left. Uh, Is it because he has tiny hands and he wanted to look? <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let me see your guys' hands. You big hands, yeah, it, come with me. It was crazy. Like he, so he would do working canvases. So he had like uh, canvases like way bigger than six foot by four foot, and you'd have like two feet of linen on the other side of it. Because huh. basically, if you decided that the composition, like if you needed more room, you'd like oh, wow. re-stretch it on a bigger yeah. stretcher bars. So I like did that multiple times. Uh, and I'm pretty good at stretching canvases, and he realized that no quickly. Deal. Kind of like, Ian, can you restretch that for me? And so <laughs> That's I'm, the I'm quadruple like threat. <laughs> restretching these canvases are like pretty rendered paintings on them, and I'm like pulling the shit out of them to get a tight stretch. And I'm like, oh my god, what if I just rip this like masterpiece just down the center yeah. while I'm stretching it? Like, that'd just be a mortal sin. Like, that's <laughs> it's, like you. Yeah, you're going to hell for that. You're going to the <laughs> ceiling, ceiling, what's the opposite of the ceiling fan? Fucking like oh. floor vent. Yeah. Like you're, going, you're going way into the floor vent for yeah. that. <laughs> Did we just start a cold? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the light Move over the flying fan. spaghetti monster. <laughs> yeah, I think uh. if we like set it up as a religion, we can get some good tax. <laughs> yeah, tax 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 stuff for too. sure. Uh, that would be great. Uh. But yeah. He uh he is one of the people that was like a good painting, a truly good painting needs struggle. And mm -hmm. I've seen him just like scratch off a beautiful face of a painting of his, like just sand it down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, No, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. And then he would paint it and it like looked like shit. And then he'd paint it again and it looked like shit. And then like eventually it'd be like, you know, this beautiful thing that's like Oh my god! Of course you had to like do that, but it's just insane mm -hmm. to see it like with, you know, because it was a beautiful painting, and he just <laughs> like, I mean, he uses sandpaper almost as much as he uses like brushes and. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's interesting. That's the secret, kids. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sandpaper. Uh, but I, you know, I can't remember what grid it was. Ooh. Is the thing so like? Uh, Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I can give really, you all the secrets here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really hard to we, navigate. We're talking 120? Like, we're 120. talking 120 grit? 
man, 200. <laughs> you got to like start with 100, 120, like go down to two. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a 80 guy to, to, to 120. That's rough. I don't, I don't usually do the 200. <laughs> unless... <laughs> Sergio, you don't even put them in this. 150? About that. I don't think they make 150. Oh, they totally make 150. Are we especially ordering 150? <laughs> yep. Let's get that sweet. I import it from Milan. <laughs> I've never seen one. Uh, Sergio's not Sander. You'll get there. <laughs> uh, I actually do, but I just don't remember the numbers. Uh, you got to take, um, you know, that master class i think it's going to be oh, yeah. coming in a three-day workshop like, <laughs> yeah how to sand your shit <laughs> yeah at yeah, first you paint a great face yeah first make a really beautiful painting <laughs> just like world-class museum yeah. grade painting uh, and just scratch it off and then have like a dude who's staying there just like you know pull it off the stretchers and then re-stretch it on bigger <laughs> stretchers and then just like you know paint the rest of it into it with your weird make-believe <laughs> scene that's like pulling from Icelandic landscapes <laughs> <laughs> and haunted uh, whatever yeah. uh, that would be a pretty cool video though if I also you... was like really hoping I could like trade him every painting I've ever made for like a tiny sketch <laughs> I was like this stuff's so good <laughs> should have just stole it he probably wouldn't have even noticed or what, why'd you look at it did you steal one did I have that master copy oh okay <laughs> That's, uh, I did that before oh, uh -huh. I went there uh huh yeah, I didn't paint it like he paints it. That was, that was funny to do that. I like did it from a book, you know. I did, uh -huh. like, yeah, and then it, like saw him how he paints stuff. I was like, yeah, it's uh, way different. <laughs> it's like pretty flat, you know. If you like look at one of his, you can actually see paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Damn. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, Sergio, that's, that's cool. Sergio's light eyes lit up when you said uh, uh, "nerd drum." <laughs> okay, you're familiar fan. Oh yeah, I've looked at his work for a long time. Um, I've only ever seen. Oh, actually, no, I have seen a painting of his in person. Um, of all places, there's a museum in in San or not San Jose, Los Gatos, <laughs> that oh. um, they're doing some interesting things at, at the cat. By the way, the cat, yeah, in case you <laughs> the bobcats, yeah. Um, <laughs> they uh, have this interesting museum there that I guess they have. Um, they've changed. Um, like directors there recently so they have these pretty cool exhibitions nowadays and one of them was um they had all sorts of of artists for this group show and one of them was this big odd nerdrum piece it was like eight feet oh. tall by like by like four feet that's like a that's like a medium odd <laughs> yeah. piece. that's so crazy that's nuts. Dude, some of those are like 12 feet long and then he had one Damn. in this in the studio that was like I think it had to be like sixteen. How big feet. is the studio? Oh God. This is like a different area okay. studio that had like built a special easel for this thing. It was like a prison break painting that was like in the huh. preliminary stages, and it was like it was massive. It was like a I mean it was bigger than this whole wall. A prison break painting. Yeah. Holy fuck. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I I had always loved his like small paintings when I'd only seen the books, and when I saw mm -hmm. the first the first time I ever saw one in person was when I walked into his studio. <laughs> there were just huh. like all these giant paintings on easels. Yeah, and I was like, oh, the whole thing, every bit is as good as like the small um, details because you huh. know you're just looking at it in the book where you're looking at like a it's like looking at it, it's the equivalent of like you know the big art book mm -hmm. is the equivalent of looking at one of my paintings or your paintings like on a phone where you're like oh but it's like you gotta see it in person because right. this is like you know 10 feet long and you're seeing it in like a you know one foot or one and a half foot book right mm -hmm. huh. it's just like you're just seeing the thumbnail wow you know? yeah usually i tell my people i'm like you don't need to see my stuff in person <laughs> <laughs> this is as good as it gets <laughs> <laughs> you should start like doing art on like broken dead phones <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, someone should that might that. be a good show. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be a, that'd be hilarious. Pen, pentuple threat, <laughs> phone artist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. God, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel like it's all just like one thing. You just like put in a bunch of hours of like concentrated energy. I think so. Yeah. And then, but then after you, I think build the skill. That's where you see a lot of trouble with artists. With you know, once you're kind of comfortable, like I've kind of comfortable with. Like, I think I'm growing as far as I can grow. Mm -hmm. Now, like, I have to really kind of point 
point three fingers back at myself and look deep inside. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you just got to start a new thing, you know, like be yeah. a beginner at that. You're like, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely guilty Gotta of that. start more more threats. <laughs> yeah. I'm like learning woodworking and all those things just end up taking so much time. I know you uh-huh. were saying you, you've, you've learned, you've been rock climbing recently. Yeah. That's a, another thing that I'm like getting obsessed. I like to be a beginner, you know, so I get <laughs> yeah, yeah. to like learn fast and I always wind up, I feel like the reason, part of the reason that I've gotten good at stuff is because I find people that are really good at stuff mm-hmm. and I suck at it. And I'm just like, yeah, I want to hang out with you. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, cool. And then, um, and I'm just like stoked. And I'm right. stoked on how good they are. And I'm like, I build them up. I'm like, you're so fucking badass. How do you do that? <laughs> and then, uh, and then like, you just, you know, you're hanging out with good people and you just wind up right. like absorbing some of it. And you're just like, yeah, for sure. I mean, so, probably one of the smartest tips we've ever given. On the <laughs> you know, Emilio is an insanely good rock climber. Yeah. Well, I like really, 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 really it, good. But... Yeah. Huh, really? So we started, um, cause I, I got, I was starting to go to mission cliffs and, um, and he's he's like a member of this other climbing gym, and then he started going to Mission Cliffs with me, mm-hmm. and he was getting back into it because he'd taken some time off. Um, so he was like my first climbing partner, and we'd just go boulder and do ropes and stuff. And uh, and it wasn't until like a few months later, I went. I was uh, his girlfriend Michelle's schedule changed, so he started going with her like at weekday nights. Mm-hmm. So I started going by myself sometimes, like during the week, during the day, and uh, I'd like look around, and nobody would work on problems that were like like as hard as he was working on and it mm-hmm. just occurred to me i was like oh that's like most people don't climb that well huh. okay and um yeah it turns out he's like an exceptionally huh. strong yeah. good rock climber jeez yeah it's like no really, really good <laughs> but yeah it's super fun <laughs> yeah i mean i feel like you gotta like i'm just destroying my hands in every way possible like guitar <laughs> yeah. tattooing rock climbing uh, painting i yeah. just reminded of uh, after we did the podcast with Emilio, he was talking about rock climbing and he made it sound super fun. So I looked into it. I was like, Oh, I wonder if I could get into that at all. I went to the local gym. It's like, Oh, it's like a hundred, a hundred twenty dollars a month to do it. Like, oh, probably not doing that anytime. But they soon. have, they have like all of the other gym stuff there. You know, they have like weights and uh mission cliffs has like a sauna. They have like spin class and yoga class. I think it's like 80 bucks a month, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's like a one-stop shop. It's great. And yeah. it's not like uh I've been to other gyms before and they're like it's always like really gross, like weird peacocking where people are like oiled up wearing weird outfits like, oh, really? like yeah, they're like, oh, do you not on, like oil stairs. Up? <laughs> <laughs> Only for yourself. It talks about how like pasty and like splotchy I am. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> I assume that was only the skin that was showing. I was assuming you were tanned everything everywhere else. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's like secret tan, like <laughs> t-shirt and pants yeah. shaped hand you like wear like long sleeves and <laughs> exactly. the face mask yeah. that'd, be, that'd be cool <laughs> it's like the old cool like tattoo people who like only get it where you you can't see it you know yeah right except for it's tanning they have they actually have the app op- like there are people that get like full sleeves so they get like only visible tattoos so uh-huh. they get like their neck oh, and yeah. hands and then like lower arms there's all- a name for that right probably <laughs> someone's told me that that's called like the sacramento tuxedo or some shit like that <laughs> <laughs> like that's it's hilarious. like and i was like they dropped it like i was supposed to know i think it was like that or stocked in tuxedo or something like that i was like tuxedo. what is that and he's like where you only get tattoos where they show like your neck your arms <laughs> your ankles <laughs> uh, sounds like something lauren would say <laughs> <laughs> it was a bouncer at, at uh Russian River. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Very specific. Yeah, I remember. I never will forget that day. <laughs> he opened my eyes. Uh, Maybe you should totally rock climb. <laughs> Just like see if you can make friends with like someone that works there and be like, hey, would you take a painting for membership? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you yeah, know no Talopa? Shit. Talopa, no. He's like a he's a well, he's like a one like a Bay Area artist. And he's a huge rock climber. Oh, is he? Uh, hmm. At least I, he's really into it. He's done it forever. He taught at Stanford. He oh, well. teaches rock climbing at Stanford. And he does like random rock climbing. He's always like, oh, I'm in, I don't know, areas near us. Because I guess there's cliffs people climb there. He's like, oh, I teach a class out there. Yeah, there's a bunch of really cool, really hard climbing like in this part of the world. I bet. Yeah. yeah. But I mostly just do gym climbing. Uh, yeah. They call it a uh, Prince of Plastic. 
<تصفيق> سب بام 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 يا يا هي هي انت اي ان ذا برنس اوف بلاست نوت ريلي ذا سيم بس يا يو جيت ذا ايديا اي درا وذ ون اوف ذا ستوبيد بلاستيك بنسلز تو فول ديسكلوجر وات دو يو مين لايك ا ميكانيكال بنسل لايك ان ابل لايك ان ابل بنسل لايك ا ستايلش يا يا وان اوف ذوز وان اوف ذوز بس اتس جاست يو نو اتس جاست ا designs that i'm gonna then hand tattoo right so that's like how i justify it you know it's like um yeah that's that's weird that whole idea is always weird to me that whole like i design the painting and then and then then, paint then, it. Yeah. Yeah, then execute it yeah it's not sexy at all and that's like the new paintings i've been I making say it, but yeah the new paintings i've been making don't aren't that mm-hmm. so like yeah that's you're that's bringing kinda, sexy back yeah well i'm trying to yeah I'm working <laughs> <laughs> trying to like birth it into existence <laughs> for the first time <laughs> uh, but yeah like yeah. these ones up there uh they don't have like photo mock-ups well, this know? is perfect time to talk about <laughs> the three paintings we can talk yeah. about all three but yeah, triple threat, sure. triple <laughs> yeah, threat. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh but, but uh, yeah so you have these three paintings one is a self-portrait not nude but not nude not fun <laughs> yeah a bit uh, disappointed uh, <laughs> another one's a guy that's like real fucked up looking <laughs> yeah there's like almost like uh, one person's wearing like those uh, it looks like victorian or something and like uh, yeah the uh, uh jacobian rough yeah kind of thing. Mm-hmm. and uh, there's like color you put kind of in places on that where I don't know if it's meant to feel this way, but it almost feels like a, like a gesture in a weird way because of it. I don't know if that was on purpose at all or yeah, not. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the like lips are like little black cherries and they're like uh-huh. all pursed and like gross looking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's so that, that one, like basically for all three of these, the way that um, the process was, was like, I kind of treated it like a sketch. Mm-hmm. So the first time I like had the photo reference of like the person or the, their their faces basically like mm-hmm. twelve by twelve faces on panel, mm-hmm. um, and the uh, the first session would just be like trying to render the face kind of as is, um, mm-hmm. but with like no no drawing, like just going straight onto the onto the panel, you know, mm-hmm. and like cutting in and just trying to do the best I could, and then kind of like leaving it, and it's pretty rough and like pretty like a lot of the parts were wrong. <laughs> And then the second session, like on the self-portrait, um, I started just rendering. Oh, actually, on that one, I like just fucking palette knife the whole thing vertical because it like looked like such dog shit after uh-huh. the first day. <laughs> but then it looked kind of cool. Like it was all smeared in a weird way and you could still see the, the figure. And the second day um, or the second session on it, I started like rendering I started rendering this eye and it's like a lot smaller scale uh-huh. than like I normally paint. Mm-hmm. Um, and it started looking really cool, especially like juxtaposed okay to, <laughs> to that the word line. is not allowed hold up <laughs> did yeah. you just say juxtaposed <laughs> we have a strict no juxtaposed word i did it intentionally because <laughs> i listened to the last episode okay. so i'm just trying to stay you know on okay. theme um but yeah it's so next to like all the looseness is looking really cool being all tight and rendered and then um just kind of following like intuition and that's why i feel like i've been over the last like two years really embracing is like trying mm-hmm. to do art more based on intuition mm-hmm. and like um and also just keeping at a fast pace right. before you can like start thinking it to death okay. so kind of turning off like a critical mind mm. um and then just like being like i cannot judge this like i'm just gonna kind of follow my gut and follow like intuition um so yeah i started rendering parts of it and then all of a sudden I started liking it and then it started becoming really dangerous because it was like now <laughs> it becomes precious and it's like, oh, well, where do I start, stop or should, right. like, should I keep going? And then kind of like, oh, I want to keep going. And um, and I feel like I did like restrain enough to where the thing that I liked about it like stayed intact. So mm-hmm. for, for me, it was like super successful painting. Like for I sure. really liked yeah. it. Yeah. And like yeah, I like never and uh, some of the rules I was kind of like trying to make for like a um like manifesto of like what kind of like what paintings i want to make now that i'm in this like different part of i feel like i'm in a different part of my life and Mm -hmm. like a different place with painting and one of the things is like i don't want to know what it's going to look like when it's done at the start that's like one of the rules Mm. um and then another one never know that yeah so i i think most people that i like their art they never do 
and Thank I'm just like a, kind of a systematic. Thank you, Sergio. I, I like sorry, both of your arts. I apologize, <laughs> I apologize Sergio. <laughs> but uh, he's he's aiming for the throat with you. <laughs> but I'm just like a, a hopelessly systematic person, I think. So I just like uh, make a lot of like even now I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna make this formula for how I want to make paintings that are on the side note that's a great know. band name. What's that? Hopelessly systematic. Hopelessly systematic. Up and down. Up and down. But yeah. So and then the the other two paintings were kind of similar. You know, like started with like a loose thing. Um, because I do like rendering. I do like likeness and like life lifelike things. Mm. And I feel like um a lot of my friends that make paintings that can like be more abstract than me. Like, I don't feel like it's like necessarily genuine to me. Mm -hmm. Like if, when I've tried to like embrace that. So I'm kind of trying to figure out like my own version of like where I can be abstract and where I can be like loose and where I can be like imaginative. Right. Um, and also like one of the things that the biggest takeaways from like being at odds was like realizing that, uh, that's kind of when painting from photos like died for me, like really legitimately it was that, um, he paints everything from life. But I always thought that that was also kind of a cop out because a lot of people that paint from life like just paint these studio paintings where they have a model on a stool with a blanket, right? right. And at the, that point, it's the same thing as painting from a photo. It's just like a different type of photo. You know, you're still hmm. like painting a thing that's um, like the way that Odd paints is that the only way that image can exist is him painting it. Like, there's no other way to get to that painting. Huh. And uh, and some of the paintings that I've made, especially earlier on, whether I have these and I would always like fuck with these. I would take the photos. So I'd stage, you know, I'd stage everything. Like I'd have a model. We'd style everything. I'd take the photos, I'd pick the photos, I'd edit them. And I'd like, so I'd, I was designing the whole thing, but I was painting from these photos. And then, you know, there's too much of a likeness and the semblance between like the finished painting and the finished mock-up of mm -hmm. the photo. And it really like didn't, it doesn't qualify to like exist on its own it doesn't need to exist like that painting doesn't need to be there there's a thing that's close enough right right there and like we only have so many days on the planet you know <laughs> so it's like um and that was kind of like when i realized like seeing seeing him paint this like painting of a person standing right there and seeing like this incredible likeness but it, if you took a picture of like that happening and you see the painting and the model they don't like anything alike you mm. know but like the, somehow like the spirits there mm -hmm. and um and that was kind of like really kind of made me reevaluate like what i was doing and like how i wanted to do it and it was weird because it kind of like kind of broke me from painting a little bit mm -hmm. like i got home and uh and i was also super broke like financially broke <laughs> yeah um so i had to get like a different double job broke. double broke double threat broke <laughs> quadruple threat double <laughs> and, broke uh, <laughs> but yeah i feel like i'm still kind of like incubating from that experience and like trying to figure out uh and i feel like with these i started pulling on the that place where like those are basically the two rules so it's like you don't you can't know what it's going to look like mm -hmm. when it's done when you start and yeah. the other thing is that like it needs to justify its own existence like why because like why make anything right like it needs to yeah. like have a reason to be made right. it's kind of heavy but like um but yeah so that's kind of where i'm at with with painting and with these <laughs> ones and i feel like they're i'm i like them a lot and they were all like also in terms of like time scale like mm -hmm. fairly short like probably uh between two and four painting sessions on each one or something okay. like that mm. the like uh, the three in general uh they seem like they're trying to like even though they're they're i think they're painted very similarly the they almost seem like the subject matter is like all over the place a bit i don't know if that's yeah. intentional or like just maybe just because the 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 female she's kind of seems like it's like a uh like a, almost like a commentary on like older works yeah, you know, I don't know if that's intentional or not. Older works, like older like, of my work, like or older, older masters, oh, or, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. And then, then uh, Do you, you think it's because it's like the more red, red palette. It's also just like, like what she's wearing, and like even like, I don't know, maybe just the fact that it seems like a gesture, and it just it seems like it's it's uh, mm. 
Like it's a crop I'm, of an old master painting almost. Is, is that, that not am I way off the mark? I might be. I wish I could show you guys uh in progress shots of that because it was like so different multiple uh-huh. stages. And it was that was a fun one because it was like a struggle. It truly like a like it was just like a nightmare of a mm. painting. Like but it was fun like the whole way because it like it's um so these are these like twelve inch gesso boards and this is back uh-huh. to like these kind of like low um low pressure ways because i want to experiment i want to not right. feel the need to like render the fuck out of it and like mm-hmm. whatever so um i started that painting and it was a palette knife only painting mm-hmm. and it looked just terrible <laughs> and then i like painted again um and i was like i was just kind of like all over the board like trying a bunch of styles on this like mm-hmm. one small painting and then uh and then kind of just embraced like a very weird train of thought where I'm just like, Oh yeah. What if I like paint these weird, like triangle gray triangles, like over the hair and then just like swiped off the nose. And I was like, cool, I'm just going to leave that. (laughs) Um, and then it just kind of like came Mm -hmm. into like a stage that I liked a lot. And it's one of my favorite paintings actually. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. But it's all just like, yeah, these really low, like, yeah, fun, not (laughs) knowing where it's going. And Mm -hmm. there's this thing I'm doing right now with my work where, uh, I'm taking old paintings that I was just the, the time restraint, you, you know, we talked a little bit earlier, it kind of is like a good thing sometimes mm-hmm. when this, in these predicaments, it was not great because the paintings were just, they, they just, I wouldn't, I wasn't able to develop them all the way. It was like a, mm-hmm. the, the clock just kind of forced me to finish at a point I wasn't happy with. And so now I'm coming back at them and like, almost just like, I don't even remember the initial reason i created these paintings but now i'm coming at them and just trying to have fun almost like it sounds very similar to what you're doing yeah and it there is like this amazing thing i've been just like it's just so enjoyable like kind of being free to say like if it fucks up the painting like what's the worst case scenario you know and even already a painting that you don't like yeah so it's yeah it's like you're it's a low stakes gamble exactly yeah, I think once you've like made enough paintings, you're like, these things take up space. Yeah. You know, and you're like, like, why the hell have like a painting you don't like yeah. taking up any more space? Like you might as well fucking gamble with it. And if it right. wor- worst case scenario, it's still a painting you don't uh, like. And, and, and like, I've liked them more since. Yeah. But there's also the one of the cool things I realized is that both of the two paintings I've kind of liked after the fact, I know I took a ton of time creating them at uh like the first run like it took a ton of time trying to rework them and like not being happy with it and mm-hmm. overworking it and just frustrated and so like there's this revisiting those paintings there's this cool thing that happens where that time doesn't really matter anymore you know in the moment yeah. it does mm-hmm. but then when you kind of a year's past or whatever and you come back to it you're like i don't give a shit about the like the month i wasted like i don't <laughs> even care about the painting right now yeah like, uh, so it, you take the steak stakes away and like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, like I think, uh, trying to like have fun while making art. I think people and like present company, present company mainly included. Like mm-hmm. you lose track of that shit so fast. Like, right. like you start doing a thing because it's fun. Like that's why any of us start doing anything, <laughs> right? And like, mm-hmm. um, I think I'm really quick to take things too seriously mm-hmm. and like, like make make it like a gruesome task instead of like being right. a fun thing hmm. um and like i feel like painting got like mu- uh, music got that way painting got that way uh and i think it's just like a cycle that happens i think tattooing's mm-hmm. already gotten that way multiple times but tattooing's a whole different beast because like i'm on the hook with a million deadlines like right. i tattoo full time uh usually f- i tattoo four or five days a week and i have like between two and four appointments a day so okay. I'm emailing all these people. I've it's like a deadline for a painting. Like mm-hmm. every appointment's like a painting, right? Or like a mm-hmm. drawing or whatever. It's like a, a commission that like you have to have done. Right. So you like can't it's it's uh really cool because you can't fucking be like, Well, I painted a lot last night, so I'm just gonna go out today and hang out. Like you just have to do it, you know, right. a lot more yeah. than I ever am used to. Yeah. Um so I've totally like burned out and then like relit the spark multiple times already with for painting sure. in like two and a half years. Or with tattooing and uh, but yeah, with with painting and music and all that stuff, I feel like I'm coming into like a renaissance of like trying to like find that fun again and right. like also find like um 
trying to really divorce it from like money and divorce it from like attention and trying to like really just distill like what part I actually like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, yeah. And it, also trying to like, st- like realize like the drive to emulate people, I think is always present like in all of us, you mm-hmm. know, and like trying to figure out where that, like what's, what's good about that and what's bad about that. And like where you should kind of like, let things be and where you should embrace it. And right. I think that's really interesting. Um, I know like Elliot Smith had like a great, great bit on that uh, mm-hmm. where he talks about like, yeah, if you're writing a song and you realize it sounds a lot like this other song that you like and you stop writing it, you'll never write any songs because mm-hmm. everything is kind of like you, hmm. you're, you just have too many things that you've seen and right. heard and like, they're, they're all there whether right. you like it or not. So if, like that goes back to like, turning that critical brain off when you're making a thing Mm -hmm. so if you're like critical when it's so vulnerable and it's like new you know so if you're critical on it you just kill it and it's like infancy it never gets like turned into what it's going to turn into yeah so i feel like you just gotta like uh realize that there's no way around have being influenced by people yeah and then just try and not like be like okay that's cool like i'm totally gonna like see where this goes but maybe just you know try not fucking straight out cop shit <laughs> like, yeah. like it's cool like it's interesting to spot references and when you're doing something you know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah for sure the uh the, the uh one of the things i kind of use is like uh a way to break up the whole like having fun thing just, like it, it there's like this weird thing where I'm when I'm creating work, I it's like a conversation. It sounds fucking horrible, and it's part of our new cult. <laughs> Have a conversation with your <laughs> the pace. Ceiling fan. But it's, it's like this thing where I'm bouncing ideas off and seeing if I can accomplish them, and kind of and and build this narrative. Is like the whole idea is like for at least for me, it's like I want to say this. Let's see if we can say it. And it kind of like is like, uh, but one thing I've. I have like this note written down on my phone and it's just, it just, uh, tried to like make something funny. So in my work, uh, a lot of times I'll try to like, just for me alone, like I'll sneak something in there that's funny to me or, or even not so sneaky, just, just so I can kind of laugh. Cause I've realized that like my personality in general is just like you know take a shit on the world kind of like let's have fun and make fun of it like let's not take it too serious and for art it's like i take it really seriously but that doesn't necessarily mean i can't joke around with it in the same way it's almost like if you just put like a joke or something that's funny in there right it like forces you to like not take it so seriously so you can like get on with actually like enjoying it for sure (laughs) it's like a yeah intentionally or, putting a like mistake in there or something like that or just yeah i've done that before where i'd be like rendering something you just like paint like a big red stripe like right on the middle of like a nose or something you're like all right <laughs> let's like try and oh, yeah. recoup that yeah that that's probably just an exhilarating feeling in general though i had this one idea for us like a an art show opening once is to like have a bunch of paintings up and then on the opening you like have a mask and run through the painting and just like paint like red paint like right over all the faces of your own paintings and like run out of the gallery (laughs) Uh, i don't know yeah that'd be cool yeah or you just slash him i've always (laughs) i've always wanted to just kind of talk shit about my work near my work (laughs) like with random strangers just walking it's doable (laughs) it's real shitty that thing it'd be funny also if you did that with people that just bought a painting be like "Ooh, did you see that like that one was (laughs) real dog fire dumpster fire like somebody just bought that thing (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, (laughs) with your piece or anything or yeah yeah with your own piece like if you find like you know if you found out someone just bought it (laughs) i thought we were doing it to everyone's piece (laughs) just just the asshole (laughs) uh fuck i don't know you're for real sitting up <laughs> feels good i don't sit back that much oh really <laughs> yeah never sit back <laughs> this in life, is like kids. this is my tattoo pose you know i'm just like mm, really? hunched over but oh, normally my... my neck's like bent more <laughs> oh, it's really ergonomic <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> the most yeah. <laughs> i kind of screw up my lower back like sitting forward for too long though Oh sounds, yeah, it's terrible. Sounds it's like weak genetics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> painting, I always like crank my neck painting. 
Oh and really? Yeah, I'm like I always like bend it forward, kind of weird. I don't know why. I feel huh. like some for some reason if I just like push my chin out like two more inches, I see a lot clearer. <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's all making sense now. Yeah. <laughs> so where are we at? Uh, Did you have anything, you got anything on your? Oh yeah, I got your... I got some cool notes. Let's hear. And they're kind of like, uh, yeah. Okay, one of them is how you figure out your life planning for like short term. Like, oh, I might live like three more years or i might live like hmm. 50 more years and kind of uh is this in regards to art yeah in regards to art so if like you you know i feel like a lot of us plan like we're going to live to 80 or 70 right. or 90 sure. or something like that so you're yeah, kind of like okay kind of, i'm a big guy i'm, I'm thinking 100 <laughs> i'm like shooting for 100 <laughs> i've always thought it'd be really cool to have some like old ass scraggly white hair you <laughs> yeah. know i'm like be like have like weird muscles like have like some like arm muscles but everything else is like degenerated and like all like <laughs> saggy and like even more white and even more green and i could see yeah. you at i could see you at a at hundred like scraggling like be like yeah who the fuck put water in this glass i only drink whiskey yeah. i know, used to i used guys. to be a quadruple threat you know <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, yeah do, do you put uh, a lot of thought into that I do, especially lately because my time spread a little more thin than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Like with like, um, like I haven't been paying that much because my tattooing stuff takes up easily probably like 50, 60 hours a week between like doing actual tattoos, mm -hmm. emailing, drawing, all that stuff. Um, so I still have a bunch of extra time outside of that, but I wind up using it for like rock climbing and then like needing to fucking go get some drinks with friends and like right. socialize and hang out and life. uh yeah life's other life stuff uh -huh. and that kind of i think plays into thinking more short term like hmm. you know uh if i think i'm gonna live like 50 more years or something like that mm -hmm. you have more time to like i think if i if you're like oh, you have a year left to live um or maybe if it was more, if it was like five years, because you couldn't just drop everything. You couldn't just right. drop your job. You couldn't drop all of your stuff. You have to like kind of keep up your normal Some, shit. Right. You know, you have to keep working, keep paying rent, keep doing all that stuff. So you can't just mm -hmm. be like, well, oh, just like move out to Europe and travel and like do and like skydive every day. Five years? I think I would do that. So yeah, if you had like five years, you'd have to kind of keep working to like pay. You can't just, you know, you have to like do your normal life. So uh, right. I would try not to. If I had five, <laughs> I think I would, I would rather, I don't know. Yeah. What would you do with five years? You I know? mean, if I had five years, I would try to convince my wife to sell our house so we can cash out real quick. And then what? Buy a sick ass van like yours. Buy a sick van and then what? <laughs> and then drive around and experience some shit. Huh. Yeah, like see nice nature stuff and like mm, some of that, but more like people shit. You yeah, know, I would like definitely good. go see a ton of family. Uh -huh. hmm. Like, uh, you know, get a lot of drunk with a lot of them. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, other than that, just yeah, see stuff, experience things. And then where where does making art fall in that scope? I think it. I think no matter what, I would have a sketchbook. Yeah, on. Mm -hmm. yeah, no yeah kind what. of like you could do it in a in a bit like. Mm -hmm. in, in a given day but you're yeah. not like trying to hole up in a studio and make like right a master yeah 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 because it's more like you're getting down to like how it actually does you some good in a given day just like a meditation practice or exercise practice or something like that right. you know i mean it's it's interesting to think about art in general as far as like when you die how we oddly perceive it you know like art in general is that where no one's like sitting around looking at the cars the automotive guy worked on for his whole life, you know, going mm -hmm. like, wow, look at him fix those fucking things. Yeah, even if he's a master fixer of those things, you know, like mm -hmm. he might be the greatest fixer of cars. Yeah. But, but I mean, maybe someone's going to look at that guy's stuff, but I don't know. Do you think it's because like when you, when you're dead, that like marks the end. So you're able to like look at all of it as a whole. And when you're like living, you can't, you know, it's like midway. Hmm. So you can't just be like making general assessments and statements of like the whole body of work. Maybe. I, I mean, for the most part, I think n most of us in general probably won't have too many people talk about us. That's always the weird right. thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you should never assume that your work's going to be the one that 
becomes the amazing thing that everyone talks about forever because you have no control over that. You can control your actions, how much you want to, how much effort you want to put towards that. But like, it's always weird when I see guys that are like going the proper route. Do you know what I mean? Going yeah. the like, I need these things so I can get into these museums so I can be, so my legacy so can grow on forever. It's and like, everything. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. it's weird to me. It's just, it, to me, it's like, you can't control that. And what is that doing for you? Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, legacy to a lot of people is, is almost everything, right? It's the, mm-hmm. it's the definition of existence for some people. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think that way. I think it's cool. I think it's, it's that whole like Shakespearean, you die the second twice. I think is that Shakespeare you die twice. The time you die and the last time someone says your name uh, the huh. whole thing i don't know if that's shakespeare i don't know either but yeah i think it, it rings rings true it would be more yeah. like fancy talk i think yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you dieth. Thou shalt dieth. <laughs> yeah. maybe that was the ceiling fan that said that uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i think that's what like that like second death a lot of people put importance on you know they go like that's the meaning of life is to be in the history books and to mm. But at the end of the day, you, you, the smartest people are always like, that nothing matters. We're a ball floating in space. Yeah. I think if you have too much time to think, it all just comes down to nothing matters. Yeah. There's not a point to do anything. It's just like, just enjoy crisis. it. Just enjoy the ride. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But enjoy. But then if you focus on that, it's impossible to enjoy anything. If you're like, what's well, fun? And you're like, oh, is this fun? And you're like, no, not really. You know, like trying to like you're on this like analytical mode of like what do I actually like? And you're like mm. I, don't, I don't know. Well, I don't think of it. I don't know. Maybe they're just not good at enjoying. Like I think that's why. Like at least for me, why I paint. It's like I enjoy it. I I on it. Like it's it's. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes with the learning. But also, you're you've like had probably a lot of time to get there. And mm-hmm. like I think also you. Uh, I know that you you like to keep like a dichotomy between like a, having a day job so you can keep your art more like for yourself you know yeah i and wish I, think, I didn't have a day job yeah but until you didn't and then all of a sudden you're like oh shit now like i have to do all this stuff with my baby that i don't want to do you know i'm, I'm okay uh, killing the baby <laughs> It pays the rent. <laughs> oh man, can that be a bumper sticker? Killing the baby to pay the rent. The ceiling fan sounds demands like a country it. song. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I struggled with that a lot when I was in school because I was like, by signing up for classical music school, mm-hmm. I, I like knew that that was not a promising job field, you know? So I was already, but at the time I was like, I don't fucking care about money. I don't care about like worldly possessions. Like I believe in art. And also like, I don't want to do, I saw very clearly that like a full-time job is so much of your life. And I was like, I don't want to spend that doing shit. I don't want to do. Right. So the things I know that I like was like skateboarding and music. So I'm like, all right, I'll go. There's not a good skateboarding program anywhere. So I'll guess I'll go for like music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then if there was a classical skateboarding classical uh, skateboarding program (laughs) yeah you'd be in there (laughs) exactly i would have been uh but yeah and then i saw a bunch of people that were very pat like most of my friends were artists musicians in high school and then you know saw a lot of them choose the other path where you're like from the get-go going to like try and cultivate a career and then keep your thing that you like doing on the side right and i was very high horsed about it when i was first you know, the first couple of years in school, even probably all through school, really, I was very high horse about like mm-hmm. being like, yeah, I'm like doing this thing in the fore- foreground. You and know, this I'm is not... a literal thing. You would show up to school on a horse. Yeah. On a high, on a high horse. <laughs> on a super yeah. high horse. Tall horse. <laughs> um, but then when I finished school and then, you know, had to fucking face the music and like right. learn how to get food stamps oh, and that stuff. Was a that was an intended pun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but then some of the people that I knew that had like made that distinction early on, uh, it seemed to be a really smart way to go because they were able to like, they went to school for something that was within their interests and also mm-hmm. like practical. Right. And then, um, then they didn't have to waste a bunch of hours contemplating like what the fuck they're going to do to like make a living and like mm-hmm. basically like on the hustle and they could like just focus on their art. 
you know, they like had the job thing squared away. So they don't have to like spend a ton of hours. And that's something that I would like for anyone who's like pre picking a major in school. I think that's something that's, I would highly consider is like, you know, you can, it's a lot easier to keep up an art practice on your own and to like get training in something that's like a a good career Hmm. versus the other way around. Like you can't like, you know, study art and then like get cultivate a career in something specialized, like on your own. Right. You know, if you're going to like hand over all the money to a college institution for sure. Um, but I did learn a bunch of stuff and I feel like very grateful for my experience, but I think, uh, and it, and it like wound up working out, but I didn't start tattooing until I was 28. Um, and before that, you know, I did so much random stuff and right. lived and lived super fringe for a long time. You know, like lived in, uh, in Chicago, I like lived in a loft that was grandfathered down and, um, you know, I paid like very little in rent and had a room with no walls that had like curtains in front of it. Mm-hmm. But I had a beautiful like studio space to paint and we had a cool roof and it was super fun, but it was also like, if that place got shut down, I would be hard pressed to find a new place to live. Right. Like, you're really reliant on, and then, um, things got kind of gnarly there. Like one of the people I lived with was like having pretty bad like problems with like alcohol and you know it just like wasn't like a very healthy environment to be in but you're kind of you kind of wind up stuck because you can't like move because you don't have financial like uh freedom to do so you mm-hmm. know so you wind up in a lot of like weird situations that are like not ideal and maybe not conducive to like making good art or even just living a good life because you're like not free to be able to do that kind of stuff right um <clears throat> And yeah, I don't know. It's a, I think it's like an interesting point that people don't talk about it enough of like whether you kind of do like day job right. and art or like try and like just go all art. So so it, do you ever play like that scenario out in your head? Almost like a mental exercise of like cuz the I don't at this point I don't know what I, I have a hard time playing that out because like it worked it like I tried a million things and I finally found something that kind of worked, mm-hmm. you know? So it's just like trying everything I could think of. Like there was a minute where, um, when I was living in Oakland, I had a neighbor that was a friend of mine whose mom bred Bengal cats. They're like, there's like uh-huh. big yeah. cats. The ones that are like wild. They're basically yeah. like halfway between like a mountain lion and like <laughs> yeah. a domestic cat. Yeah. They look super cool. They have stripes and they're like know, big yeah. and strong, you know, no, they can get like, like, an accidentally, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> you need stitches if they like, like swat you or something yeah here they um, here they demolish homes yeah. <laughs> yeah you think like a normal cat can destroy a couch in like a month like <laughs> yeah. one of those things like, <laughs> yeah um but anyways they're they're super expensive you know those cats are super mm-hmm. expensive and uh my neighbor had one that was like her you know from her mom mm-hmm. and i did a painting of that cat kind of like organically you know i like took a picture of it and painted this cat and i thought it was cool and i was like oh what if i like offered pet portraits to people that buy these really expensive pain of really expensive cats like what's another like thousand dollars for like a painting of the cat you know right and um her mom was like totally on board as like yeah i'll send you some like examples i'll make and you can like just have it as like an extra thing you offer to people that are buying these really expensive cats Uh and i feel like everything was just like that way like you're always looking for like an in you're always looking for like something that can like work out and it's really distracting from like making meaningful work because I'm you're so, so not the the way you're thinking of things is not my mind <laughs> at all. But these were like I mean this is I don't know it's like five or six years. It was just like a I I have a hard time imagining like I'm being a, in that spot. I, I think I'm such a grumpy puss in like the opposite way is like someone's like we should chew these cats and I'm like no nah, I'm not doing that shit. I wish I knew at the time you could have passed that shit <laughs> over to me. I would have been paying cat. I've been the cat guy by now. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to do, uh, someone just contacted me. I think I'm going to do my first commission in, I think, eight years. Holy shit. Shame. And uh, it's literally because it? <laughs> it's cause she was like, I have a little bit of an idea, but you can do whatever you want. And if you hate it, you can stop. And how much do you want? And like all these, like, ev- like the dream idea of like, it's a scam. That's not a real person. Oh, she's sending, she sent me half. So I'm half of what I'm charging. I'm like, all right, half on delivery. So have you started? 
No, I, I just finished the deal uh, yesterday. Okay, congrats. Uh, but it's like, it's like, oh, this, why don't people exist like you for people like me that are grumpy pusses that are like, just like, like the second someone's like, can you? I'm like, no. I, I have the, I've had, I think, three conversations with coworkers. And one with my neighbor where they're like, can you draw my kid? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, yeah. why not? <laughs> I'm like, because I don't want to. Well, your kid's not special. I can, Hashtag. Only, I can only do that. Right. That's a good one. <laughs> I think it's taken. <laughs> Cash Hashtag, Hashtag your kid's not kid's special. Not special. <laughs> I'm sure it exists, but. Uh, I can only do that through email like tell somebody i can't i'm not going to do their idea mm. i'm like yeah so i have a very thorough emailing process for a tattoo i'm like this is the way it all works you gotta tell me sure. all the stuff you want yeah, yeah. i should if show I meet you... you in person i'll just be like yeah totally we got that <laughs> i but should it's... show you my message to the lady when she first present like reached out to me i'm like i'm probably not going to do it because i hate your impressions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you can jump through all of these hoops <laughs> yeah then you deserve and a commission she, from she me. literally like answered all the right qu- she answered it exactly the right way and i'm like holy shit this is going down i'm doing it holy uh, shit josh is doing a commission yeah but I, that's just me in general Jesus, so like, long it's, it's, <laughs> like i i'm always kind of like are you okay uh i'm always kind of in the mindset of like i don't want to paint for anyone but myself and I'm selfish that way. I totally understand it. But at the same time, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm in this weird mindset where I'm like, and I also want you to pay me enough money for me to quit my job. It's like this weird, mm-hmm. for sure. but it's off the idea that I, I hope it's, it, I'm not like hoping that it's just like, I hope I get good enough and, mm-hmm. and business minded enough to work that out. Like uh, mm-hmm. there's other things like, for instance, we do this podcast. It's like, I super enjoy this podcast, but it's also like, hopefully this helps my art career. You know, it's that, it's that whole mentality of like, and if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. Yeah. But it's, there are like these, like me and my wife, we bought our house and that's like only based on the fact that I want to do art full time and that buying a house sets my rent forever. Mm -hmm. So... So it's like if you want to make good art, you don't focus on like what pencil to buy. It's just like focus on right. buying a house. Yeah, focus on the <laughs> yeah. business aspect uh-huh. for sure. <laughs> yeah. I think is like think try to think. Even I don't I don't necessarily think you have to think as far as like forfeiting your work to do it. I think the important things are like what are the moves I can do outside of my work to not sacrifice that to do what I want to do, and how do I get there? And mm-hmm. so a lot of things are hard work. Like I work my job to do what I'm doing. Right. And, uh, but I don't enjoy it. <laughs> and I, and I'm always constantly thinking like, how do I get there? And how do I do that without sacrificing the art? And do you think that like working that job that you say that you don't really like helps build a fire to make the art that you make though? Cause like if you didn't have that job and you just had to make that art, all the time mm-hmm. it's like eating the same meal over and over again it's like you have to eat kind of like a bland meal at the first part of the day and then you're like oh i'm gonna eat this thing with all the flavor in it and it's like wow this is amazing i don't think so the the only job i've ever really enjoyed was just a job that i did something different every day it was the same thing but it was different mm-hmm. and the reason being is that it just it was like the creative part of my mind was enjoying it right and yeah. and i think that's what art does for me it's i'm doing the same thing every day but i'm doing something totally different i, I absolutely agree that's and like yeah that's, and the, yeah go ahead sorry uh, uh, that's like what uh tattooing is it's like the same thing you know using yeah. the same tools and doing the same thing but it's like a different thing every time and yeah. a different mm-hmm. person every time so it's like it's kind of like I feel like I really hit something that resonates with mm-hmm. me. It's like, uh, I was found, I learned to paint with a friend. Like we painted, I kind of had like a joint studio situation. Mm-hmm. So painting was never like a solo endeavor for me. Mm-hmm. And, um, when I moved out of that first loft, all of a sudden I was painting by myself and I was like, I could do it for a couple of days in a row. Um, but I would just get stir crazy, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, don't like 
doing things in isolation that much and same mm-hmm. with like recording music like i like to play music and I like to play music with people right. recording music super fun mm-hmm. but i like hit a wall where i get That's like just stir crazy where i'm just like oh, i don't really like spend it like you know if i only have a few years to live like i don't want to be fucking sitting in a studio by myself for um you mm. know days on end like mm-hmm. it's just not uh it's not fulfilling to me or it like it really like passes its mark of like okay this was really fulfilling and now i'm just like hmm. it's overdoing it yeah. but uh when i have someone in the room that changes everything and i can like i could go forever i can paint 16 hours i can oh, like wow. so with tattooing uh you, your canvas like can talk back to you so it's <laughs> and it yeah. can be dicey because it's a different person every time so sometimes sure. it's like yeah. amazing and you're like i could do this forever and other right. times it's like the most taxing two hours you've ever <laughs> yeah. experienced or it's like leaving you're just like i have no energy for anything ever again <laughs> uh but yeah i think it i think it's way more sustainable for me yeah. like it yeah yeah and then that's that's cool though that your creative process is it seems like it was developed as a like a group effort in a weird way yeah i grew and, i grew up in like a i have three younger sisters uh-huh. and my mom stayed at home while uh to like raise us while my dad worked so i grew up there's like you know you could count the days on one hand that like there was nobody in the house in a given year when i was growing up so i think that might be part of it or like mm-hmm. i never had like an empty quiet space mm. and, you have a uh, big family yeah my mom's one of eight and my dad's one of three so i have like a giant extended family and uh-huh. we're all super tight mm. we get together like multiple twite, times like a year tight <laughs> nice and we're white so it's white <laughs> <laughs> uh how many yeah. siblings do you have i've got three younger sisters nice. yeah Oh, so yeah, you're so the big se- brother. Yeah, I'm setting the. They like have learned what not to do. You know, <laughs> they're all right. lawyers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're exactly. actually all. They actually all have like art, uh, art things they do, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty cool. Like, like the, on the side, or uh, a little bit, like mm-hmm. halfway. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the Lynn, the oldest of my three sisters. Shout out to Lynn. Shout out to Lynn. <laughs> uh, does she's a writer and a. Oh, nice. Draw, okay. She draws a lot, and she's actually doing like a graphic novel oh, she's working right now. And then Allison uh, is into film, so she's like at, just quit her job to get into like film production, which uh-huh. is super cool and That's it's going awesome. really well. Hmm. And then my sister Connie's a ceramicist. Nice. So she like yeah, we've got like a bunch of stuff from hers in here. <laughs> nice. Right cool. They're all crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they like <laughs> yeah. It sounds like they learned what to do from you. I think they learned a lot what not to do, too. <laughs> <laughs> they're all younger than me, and they're all, like, doing really good. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. do they got a sweet-ass house in San Francisco like it? Yeah. Are they yeah. slinging paintings the homeless near Dolores <laughs> Park? That's right, man. I got that I got that niche, mark, like, cornered. <laughs> yeah. That's mine. Yeah, I didn't see any of them with ceramics. <laughs> I should have told you guys it was too early. <laughs> you know where to take your paintings. <laughs> uh... uh no, that was awesome. I like that. What else do you have? I'm kind of oh, curious. Here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my questions for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what do we got here? Uh, <laughs> I thought there were questions for us to talk about. <laughs> I didn't know they were for us. No, yeah, they're just they're, they're that. <laughs> oh, uh, one of the things that like I think has been interesting is uh, like emotional instability in the role of making art, huh. where it kind of like oftentimes it seems like good art and good music is made by people that are like very rocky emotionally uh-huh. and i definitely like feel that way personally and yeah I remember when i was younger going to see like a therapist and they're like well maybe we should like medicate you and maybe you should do antidepressants and stuff and i was like well is that gonna like make is that gonna ruin my art and my art output because that i feel like that's part of it is being like so turbulent uh-huh. Uh-huh. um and like also kind of like how i feel like struggle is like a important part of like making mm-hmm. art hmm. uh and then yeah kind of thinking i think you guys talked about with daniel seagrove on like the other episode about uh you know like sometimes it turns into a pissing match of like who had it worse <laughs> right. like yeah, that yeah. can like kind of justify like an artist's life but i do think there's like a reason why princes and princesses and like royalty aren't in the history books for like making good art or good music it's <laughs> right like, you're like, guess you haven't pampered. seen george bush's dog <laughs> 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 yeah, right. i mean i'm sure he's tortured <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> at least he has probably tortured others 
Uh, yeah, mean, but for me, I I thrive on comfort. Actually, really? <laughs> yeah, like I I don't like to to do my art when I'm not like a hundred percent into it. Like when things are going not great in my life, I don't feel as motivated to go to the studio and work. Uh, oh, right. It kind of throws me off to be not. Um, uh, when things are going weird in my life, um, I'm less motivated to like be comfortable in my studio. Huh. So um, it kind of comes down to that. What you were talking about a little bit before with the like five years, <laughs> what would I do with those five years? Um, and if those five years, if I knew they weren't going to be comfortable, it would be tough for me to like sit down and, and be at my studio all the time. I'd, I'd maybe want to do something else with my life mm. uh, so yeah i don't know i i love stability <laughs> like i'm just i just grew up that way like like life hasn't been that crazy for me <laughs> so it's wild yeah yeah I'm, uh, i mean i'm like the very opposite of sergio <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean in what way <laughs> in in the way that like m growing up my life was like pure chaos oh sure yeah and it that was one of the things like why i mentioned that is because like i feel like for a lot of the times it's like i could i could be i could beat that right like I, I can win that race is like the let's compare who's got the hardest life a lot of times <laughs> i go like i will i win <laughs> yeah. but then for me it's like but that's not why i want you to like my work uh -huh. i want you to just like it like i i, uh -huh. I maybe it, maybe if you feel that pain or that struggle or whatever that's great like i enjoy that but but the the that will this, never be a selling point for you yeah that will never yeah. be yeah exactly and it, it you know just like the opposite of sergio like the sketchbook was always like my escape from my surroundings you know so it, it is that like it is that like uh you know that thing for me so sometimes mm -hmm. when i'm going through shitty things i'll like dive into my sketchbook and i and i do kind of enjoy seeing those moments for myself but i don't um I don't want it to be like a pissing match of who lived a lived hard life. Yeah. Like I want my art to stand on its own. And if it can have the, the experience that I've gone through as a part of it, then I'm like grateful that that's there. But I don't want, I don't want it to be the American idol selling point. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't want my story to define my work. Right. You know? uh, it's gotta be authentic for you in that but way. But teach their own. Like I'm not, if if uh, like that's just how i feel you know yeah. but i don't know how you feel about it i agree i mean i think like personally i think that uh with with visual art that like the p like if you're walking in a museum or a, a gallery or whatever um you should look at the piece and mm -hmm. then decide you should only read about it if you're already interested in what you see right and i think that's like a big um a big part of like the art dialogue, I guess, is like, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people read everything there is to read about it mm -hmm. before they've even taken in what the visual part of it is. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like, and you can talk about all the reasons why it's important or why it's a successful piece. But I think if like, it doesn't like arrest you and doesn't make you like pause and actually right. want to know more about mm -hmm. it, that you really should not read about it because it's like, uh, it, it is a visual piece of thing. So if it, a visual piece of art, so if it's not like registering or making you interested visually, mm -hmm. then I don't think you should like dive deeper into it. Right. You know, um, yeah, it should, your backstory should add value, not give right. it all its value. Yeah. yeah. If I'm at a museum, uh, uh, I have to look at the painting and be into it before I look at yeah. the caption or else right. I don't I think care. Yeah. I, I would really love to see like a museum that, hides the plaques mm -hmm. and then you actually lift a thing to see who it is mm -hmm. because i'll notice that when i'm looking at paintings um your name like your eyes dart to the name mm -hmm. and like if it's a name that you know that you like you like or you've liked paintings of theirs or you've heard people that you respect talk highly of them you like give the painting a lot more it's like already on a good note or vice right. versa if it's a painter that like you don't you've seen paintings you don't like or you've heard like whatever they're not that good of a painter you like i'll give it a negative you know you're kind of like 
it's a uphill battle for the painting. Right. I think it'd be really cool if they if they just had a little. All they have to do is just add a blank flat, and you just mm-hmm. lift it up. Yeah. But I think it'd be a totally different painting you, experience. Hmm, you'd be like, this painting's fucking like this is dog shit and you look at oh it's a picasso and you're yeah. like oh fuck i guess i suck i don't yeah. know anything you about art you don't have to put a flap on a pollock though <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll all recognize it from a mile away <laughs> when you go to a museum do you ever start to notice the other people who you assume are artists and how they observe the paintings because a lot of the times they'll read the caption more than they look at the painting itself uh-huh. uh, i find that kind of interesting and it's like the the painter doesn't make that plaque right i think right. that's interesting oh, yeah. too so they're like taking in <laughs> they're really taking in the thing that like really has nothing to do with a piece of art this yeah. is like the museum curator they like need to have a plaque and they're like oh, what are we gonna put on it right uh that's a good that's a good little yeah. thing you can do <laughs> uh, it'd be cool if you had like i don't know <laughs> i make, should make a thing make paintings of plaques I actually I thought it'd be really cool for a minute to make like a series of Trump Loyal paintings of degrees and sell those. Oh what? Of degrees. Of like, of like, oh, like education degrees. Like <laughs> yeah. oh you want like an uh, MFA? <laughs> like I'll make that for you. But it's an oil painting. Like right. this is not like a counterfeit degree. <laughs> Um, you could totally do the plaque one and then write, this is not a plaque. <laughs> this is or this is not an plaque. artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a painting or something. Oh, is it like the whole, like, uh, was it pipe. Magritte? Yeah, this is not a pipe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a painting. <laughs> uh, all right. I don't know. Should we talk about your uh, questions, Sergio? Oh, yeah, you guys had questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, we got them. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed your questions. Yeah, actually, yeah. I should too. tell guests to... <laughs> Bring like, your own damn questions. Yeah, bring your own questions. I have like a couple of questions for <laughs> for the podcast. It is fun when like it's more of like we're just a having dialogue, a yeah. dialogue yeah. about yeah. rather than an interview. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is great to learn like backstory of your life and stuff, but it's also cool to like just mm-hmm. see what you're curious about as an artist. Yeah. I mean, it's very obvious. It's like we've done this so many times. The like, I'm curious about these things, but everyone's got their own like little niche of like mm-hmm. what do you guys think about this yeah shit? what do you guys think about yeah <laughs> like the life one was an interesting one that oh was yeah for cool. sure <laughs> That's yeah. The, i was like stuck in my thoughts not <laughs> talking what would i do with my life <laughs> uh, did you answer what you would do by the way i did not <laughs> no Ian. no i didn't oh. really uh, i'm still i'm still working on it you know <laughs> yeah. um i think that like doing physical stuff has been becoming more and more important to me mm-hmm. you know and like uh and like i said i used to skateboarding was like a really big part of my life mm-hmm. and um also like your job gives you kind of the freedom to potentially travel if you wanted to yes yeah, so i've been i've been traveling more and that's something that i've always wanted to do i think mm-hmm. that's something that, like everyone wants to do and they're right. like yeah i want to travel more but when you actually start doing it especially Work. when you travel working doing it it's um it's very it's wild. Like it's, yeah. it's a whole thing. Um, you probably long for going home. That's what, that's kind of the thing I love about it. Like I just got back from Chicago. I was working at uh, black Oak in Chicago and Logan square, mm-hmm. which I've been going to a few times a year. Mm-hmm. But then I went and did the Chicago tattoo convention with them. And it was mm-hmm. my first time doing it. And it was and, uh, like, you were with, what's that lady's name? There's someone that's like, I've been following since my Flickr days. There's tiny Di Fiore, who's the owner. And then there's Chloe, uh, and then there is uh, Stephanie Brown and Stephanie Esther. Brown. Oh, yeah, so she's been Stephanie in. Um, yeah, she's amazing. I've I'm lucky enough to have a little bird tattooed from her. Awesome. Here, oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> I've followed her since I didn't know she was a tattoo artist till I she's followed her on amazing Instagram. Painter too. Yeah. yeah, on Flickr she would only post I think her paintings, and I'd be like, damn, this lady is amazing. <laughs> yeah, she she was uh, just in like a. We did a show together, or I was in a show with her at Spoke, mm-hmm. um, and it was my first time getting in that gallery, and it was for, like, a tattoo flash show, <laughs> which is just, like, I was really enjoying the irony there. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, would have, I was dying to get into this gallery. <laughs> and I was like, I had, yeah, a little piece mm-hmm. of flash drawn. Hmm. But, uh, uh, oh, yeah, the, fi- the five-year thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that holding up in the studio – like I like to work with people, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, and one of the things I I think I've been really kind of going back to, uh, okay, total sidetrack, but I think um, 
I think when I was before, before college, like before college age, I think people in general are really in tune with doing things because you want to, and you have like a, a very inert drive to do a thing. Right. So super into skateboarding and playing music and hanging out with friends and all that, because like all of like, how are you going to pay for your life? How are all these like adult questions aren't really entered into the picture yet. Right. There's also like, like a spontaneity about that time in your life mm-hmm. it's like i can end up anywhere tonight yeah those or kind of things you have no idea like where your life's going but right. i think i think a big part of it is that like really the motivation to do anything is that you want to do it right yeah. um and then i think even by the day even when you start looking at colleges like even like you know junior year of high school or something like that is mm-hmm. things really start shifting and it becomes a lot about like uh the tactical plan of like well, what are, your, what are your goals? Like, where do you want to be? Like, what kind of life do you want to live? Because that's mm-hmm. going to affect, like, what you go to school for and what you – you have to really start kind of, like, planning everything. And, like, are you a person that cares a lot about worldly means? Are you a person that cares a lot about, like, artistic expression? Are you a person that cares a lot about, like, social stuff? Right. Or, like, being with friends? And I think as soon as you hit that, it becomes really murky about, like, what you actually want as a person yeah. and what you want for yourself and why you want to do things. And I, like I said, was on like a pretty high horse about like going for what I thought was important and it is important to me, but like playing music. Um, But by doing so, I wound up being so much more money oriented because it was so hard to make any money that like somebody that went for business probably had to think about money a lot less and Mm. had to think about that kind of stuff a lot less because it was already kind of sorted Mm. versus me. I like, had a music degree and like not much to do with it so it's just like it's kind of ironic that like everything wound up being about money Mm -hmm. because it just you know like it's in such short supply and i couldn't figure (laughs) out like a way to make it and without doing something that i hated um and and then now it's like the first time where i feel like um you know i've been really lucky to be pretty successful and in in high demand with tattooing that um all of a sudden i'm kind of being like okay I'm kind of going back to me like, what do I actually care about? And like, what do I actually want to do? And what makes me happy? Right. Um, and it's like, it's really, it's been really interesting to mm-hmm. go through. And I think a lot of it is like what you're kind of mentioning. Like if you only had five years, you're like, well, I'm not going to hole up and just draw. I'm going to see family a lot. I'm going to see friends a lot. And right. I'm going to have good times with them. And I'm going to go like, uh, have like, you know, meaningful, real experiences with people. And I think that um, that we all kind of take tend to take that shit for granted and overlook it because we think oh, we sure. have like 70 years left or 50 years mm-hmm. left or whatever. Right. And then you're like, uh, so yeah, I've kind of been like trying to get that balance in a place where I like it better. It, um, there was, I forget yeah. who was doing it, but there was someone that, that broke down kind of like the amount of time he knew he was going to talk to his mom it was like super dark in a <laughs> way because it's like, wow. it's like, you know, like I talked to my mom, like, and he was an older gentleman and his okay. mom was pretty old, but it was still like, I, I, you know, like I'm whatever. And my mom, she's like, let's say in her eighties or something. He's like, my mom calls me once every other week, you know, give her, the, I might talk to my mom like 300 times. It's like, mm-hmm. like, that's nothing. He's like, I might see my mom four more times in the year because we don't live near each other. And you're like, yeah, yeah. You're like, fuck. You yeah, know, like, you start yeah. to like add it up and put it like yeah. that plainly. It's, it's super heavy. Yeah. I think about a lot about like my own mortality and the mortality of people that I, I care about. And, uh, you know, there's all those memento mores in art and paintings mm-hmm. of skulls and paintings to like remind you that one day you will die. And that's like what <laughs> memento sure. more is. And, uh, and I think it's funny because it makes everything meaningless, especially mm-hmm. like your own toils of like what you're making and like what you're working on. But I think the like personal connection with uh, people you care about is like mm-hmm. the thing that like will never be undone. Like you're, yeah. you'll never be like, oh, fuck, I spent too much time like hanging out with my friends or hanging out with my family or whatever. Right. Um, I mean, even art. As long, I, I think as long as you're enjoying it, I don't think you'll regret it. You no, know? yeah, you're for not sure. gonna look back and be like, for me, it's like, uh, it's if if I die, if they go to the hospital and they're like, you got like three weeks to live, I'd be like, fuck, why did I spend so much time working? Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's it's that it's like I would it would be like I wish I painted more, 
and I wish I saw Phantom more. Yeah. Like and friends. Those are like the two the two or three thing. I don't know, whatever. But you do that for the with the assumption that you're doing that to survive, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because well, we don't also live in planning a planning for the future, right? Yeah. You're planning for like trying to mm-hmm. set yeah. yourself up. I mean, up I'm not for, naive. I understand. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just that would be my I would never what I'm saying is I would never regret the time I spent in my studio by myself. Oh, for sure. It would yeah. it would just be I mean, I understand what work solves, you know, it's mm-hmm. that problem yeah. that I mm-hmm. solve uh cuz we don't live in a world where art is a uh, very viable career uh, for most. Oh, yeah. This is another point that I, I had a thought when I was taking a shower right before this podcast was, sure. uh, was this idea where like with, with making art, you're not supposed like, you don't think, and you're not supposed to think about mm-hmm. like money or value or anything. It's supposed to be like pure creation outside of like commerce and outside of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But then once the art is made, it's almost all that's ever talked about is like it's value and it's stuff. And then the, the, also the idea that art is like most normal people's vacation outside of like regular business life. Mm -hmm. Like they're Mm -hmm. like, Oh yes. Like I'm going to take a break and go enjoy art and like take a break from my life of, uh, (laughs) commerce and my Hmm. like, of goods and services and stuff like that. Well, vacation is good money. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to tourist uh, oh, and then like, attractions. And then like another idea of like um, how it's kind of a weird irony where, uh, you know, the scale of making art where you're like, okay, if you're making a painting and like, you know, you're trying to make a living off of your, your paintings or your drawings or whatever, mm-hmm. um, you can only make so many in a given month yeah. and your monthly expenses are so much. So in order to like make that work, mm-hmm. you have to sell it for this price and it winds that- up, you're wind up pricing <laughs> things to where only like the wealthy can afford them. Right. So it winds up being just another service mm-hmm. of like poor people making a service exclusively for the wealthy. Right. And then, yeah. uh, <laughs> that, that, that realization to me has made me realize that almost like, merchandising your work is more respectable in a weird way. Yeah. Because you're making it available to like your own people and your yeah. own peers and you're stuff. Not, like you're not just trying to like think of like, I need to sell this shit to rich people because mm-hmm. that's who can buy it. It's like, yeah. fuck that. Like, <laughs> let me make money through these people who enjoy my art. And I don't, I can, I don't also have to put my mindset of like what rich people want in their home kind yeah. of mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, fuck that. Like, I've been recently thinking about that a lot, that specific thing of, like, selling things to rich people. And I've, like, maybe once a week think to myself, like, fuck selling work to rich people. Like, fuck that. I don't even, it's almost like I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, because it's it's like, like, I just should merchandise everything and be like, look, it's all for you guys. You guys can buy these prints and everything. And I don't even want to fucking, I can burn the painting or something. Yeah, totally. Hmm. It's like but, taking it into your own hands. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. fuck them being in control of my career. It's funny, right? You're like, oh, I'm so outside mm-hmm. of that world. Like you think yeah. as like an artist, you're so outside of like, mm-hmm. you know, being just like another like little like showpiece for the yeah. wealthy. And what's fucked up about the art world is that you burning your, your originals would probably make rich people want it that much more. Right. The Bingsky model. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know that, that like my, I've been thinking about that for like at least a month now and just been like, <laughs> fuck that. Like, cause I did the same exact thing. The whole, like, how much does it take for me to survive? Mm-hmm. How much, how many paintings I make, you know, how many paintings could I make mm-hmm. if I was working as a full-time artist and how much would each of those paintings have to sell for yeah. me to survive? And it's like, well, that's a lot of fucking money. Mm-hmm. And I can't do that. Like, it seems like an impossible thing. And then, then it goes to like, well, I don't even know why I rely on the fact, like for, for me, I've like, I grew up very poor. So it's like, I don't even know what the fuck these people think. Like we live in two different worlds. Mm-hmm. I don't even, yeah. I can't even comprehend what goes through their head when purchasing art. Like <laughs> yeah. why, and wh- why am I going to waste my time trying to do so? When there's a ton of people that'll enjoy my art for a way lower price and I don't have to fucking think about it, <clears throat> you know, yeah. that whole 
problem solving. I was just talking to actually uh, Stephanie uh, before mm-hmm. the convention about that. And we we're talking about like prints and how there's like a funny thing that goes along with making prints of stuff mm-hmm. where it's like, uh, it, it's, it's kind of like a, people get weird about it. People right. get weird about making prints. And then the, you know, if you want to make it on nice archival paper through like a nice printer, mm-hmm. even that, like I, I, was really high hoped and I made a series of prints for th- four paintings, three or four paintings. I mm-hmm. made like three sizes mm-hmm. and I was like, great, you know, this will finally be available to like get my art to my peers and friends and family and all that stuff. And, uh, and even the price points to like make that afford, like to make that work with how much it costs to like make the prints was still like more, you know, it was pretty unsuccessful. Right. Uh, and then she was telling me that she went, she like was doing she did the same thing and then found like a company that um would do you know you could do like basically lower quality less archival prints Mm -hmm. um and by lowering the price point like Like a poster almost yeah kind of like a poster it's pretty it's like pretty nice she showed me some of them uh and it's not like archival to I don't know what to what degree but I'm sure it'll last at least like Mm -hmm. 10 20 years you know like just fine and by that time, and so, but she can sell prints for like 30 or 40 bucks. Right. And I was thinking about how if the people that are buying those, you know, wind up probably displaying it prominently. Mm-hmm. And like, it's a really, it's a big deal for them. And it's like, takes up a very prominent place in their homes. And it's kind of like more meaningful than right. somebody like dropping the price on like the full price painting. Because it's these people that like don't buy art that are like kind of break, they're just coming into it to buy this like low price print hmm. in a way where it's like kind of these are like your people. I mean, I remember right. when I was when I got my first like room, like dorm room, and I was like wanting to put uh, art on the walls. And when For you sure. the, when mm-hmm. you pick your like posters and prints that you buy, um, like how meaningful that was to you mm-hmm. and it's like so genuine and so amazing oh, yeah. Yeah. but there's a weird stigma about making prints and selling a print for 30 bucks or something like that it's like but i think that's where we need to like kind of restructure things and like be like no we're making this for other we have to figure out a way to like make it for each other rather than just yeah, like right. well i also don't to, think it needs yeah. to be mutually exclusive yeah you can have different for sure price areas for whoever can afford well, it a lot of times like whoever's into it galleries get fucked up about galleries get weird about it like galleries can get really? weird about like having an etsy shop where like you make you yeah, sell fuck with the gallery that, that's that controlling yeah. about it though yeah hmm. yeah I don't know. tattooing I'm... is really cool because it kind of does bridge that gap like i'll tattoo oh, yeah. i'll tattoo some i tattooed somebody who works at subway and then I'll tattoo like right. a CEO. What's the average that somebody spends on one of your tattoos? Uh, Do you have a good so idea of that? So my, uh, so my minimum's three hundred, and then I charge three hundred per hour. And typically, okay. a tattoo is between like, usually like one and three hours, but a lot of them are like between one and two. Mm. Um, and then some bigger pieces will take, you know, maybe two or three sessions or something like that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times people will get a piece for like between three and 600 bucks okay. Um, okay yeah and uh yeah it's cool like you'll uh, i've tattooed like s- such a giant cross section of people <laughs> and it's really cool to get to like kind of get a feel for so many different like walks of life like i tattooed a bunch of medical people mm-hmm. i tattooed a surgeon and i got to like yeah. ask them all these silly questions about for sure yeah <laughs> like the th- same things people ask me I was like what was the first time you cut into a person because like right. you go from zero to one like there's a time where you've never cut into a living person and then all of a sudden you're cutting into like the abdomen of a very living person right. like and then you know i've tattooed like ceos of like weird tech companies and i've tattooed right. like chefs and I've tattooed like uh professional dancers and like right. it's really cool because you just like span the gamut mm-hmm. um and like it's kind of like a podcast like every day it's <laughs> yeah. like all right like and you have this, this weird intimate thing because there's not like it's really made me think about touch like uh mm. you if you think about in a, a day-to-day existence like if you think about the last week what's the time <laughs> <laughs> go on josh just uh stroked the face uh, i just assumed you were gonna say something that would pertain <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah what's the last time in like the last week that you've come in like personal contact with somebody 
outside of like your partner or like a family member or like mm-hmm. a good friend like it's pretty rare oh a good friend oh i like that word that one <laughs> i couldn't say five seconds ago <laughs> yeah that, yeah for sure straight you're, you're pretty much saying when was the last time we touched strangers is that what you're saying yeah or been touched by a stranger oh, or god been, that would be yeah. weird it's weird do you ever like do like at least for me when you hand Ca- money to cashier like your fingers touch oh, i'm always like what the fuck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get your filthy hands off me stop flirting with me <laughs> i am a married man <laughs> uh, yeah huh. maybe the last time i got a massage probably or like something like that uh-huh. <laughs> yeah there aren't the- and then massages are funny because it's yeah it's like a massage like a tattoo, mm-hmm. um, but massages are weird because like it's a service, a so it's implied that like you know you're not really going to be talking because you're like sitting back and you're mm-hmm. going to be relaxed and whatever. Mm. Um, so I think it really cuts into like really good conversation really quickly because you're yeah. just kind of like mm-hmm. already at this point where it's like very vulnerable. The person's like it hurts, right? And and like for yeah, weeks, it's, it's <laughs> interesting. It's fun. Yeah, for us as painters, we, especially if we're working through galleries, we almost never get to interact with the people that we're selling to unless they happen to show up to our opening reception or something like that. Yeah, it's almost like (laughs) intentional, like there's a distance kept because they don't, like, it's not great. Right. For you to know the seller, the <laughs> right. buyer's cousin, you're like, oh, if you ever want to come by the studio, because I'm a mystery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mystery. I've never sold a painting in a gallery, not once. Really? Yeah, huh. no one's ever bought a piece for me in a gallery, and I've sold pieces. I've only sold pieces like off my easel. <laughs> so, I've like you know that's like why I don't have a good gallery presence. I think because mm-hmm. people are like, man, this shit never sells. Like, <laughs> yeah. people got pretty like a uh, yeah can't touch him <laughs> Luke from gauntlet was pretty stoked he came over and he was like i love these paintings this is stuff i want to sell and then like he had like i showed with him a, a couple times and we did like a group show mm-hmm. where it's like a four-person show just could not sell anything <laughs> ever <laughs> and i was like the whole time i'm at him like how long is like how many more chances am i gonna get like if nobody buys anything like it's, you know there's a guy named um, van gogh you ever heard of him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so you know like they're just stacking up <laughs> if anyone needs like kindling for a fucking fire <laughs> uh, uh we we have to ask you questions sergio yeah, cool <laughs> it's time for sergio's question corner <laughs> so question number one for ian reynolds <laughs> who are your top five living artists Ooh. <laughs> One of them's going to have to be a shout out to my boy, Emilio Vialba. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And then, <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, Odd Nerdrum, for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. <laughs> um, uh, probably Jenny Saville. Oh, okay. Yeah. As well. Uh, God, who else? I really like Kai Samuel Davis. Oh, cool. So, um I'm, I'm horrible at names. I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> but I have no idea. I'll know if I see their work. They don't necessarily have I'm to be gonna, painters. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Well, we should backtrack because I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. mention any painters at that point. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> uh, it's kind of fun take... for us to, to yeah, learn yeah. new people in that way. <laughs> no, who else? Um, <laughs> you know, who I've really been enjoying, maybe not like for. Uh, it was top five forever. Which is, I'm just going to go top five for, for recent times. But yeah, uh, that works. Some musicians that have been like real fucking good. Um, Ulrika Spacek is this like shoegazy psych rock band from the UK. They're <laughs> super good. They have an album called Modern English Decoration. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been I'm listening to like names. every day huh. for Check at least a out. year. I actually went to, so Emilio did uh, the paintings for this other band. Um, Again, I'm spacing on their name. This is terrible timing. (laughs) Metallica. Uh, (laughs) Okay. I can't apologize for not remembering the name. I think they're called the Beatles. He did the paintings and they opened for Ulrika Spacek. Uh And I was away. I was out of town when they played San Francisco. And, uh, And I got back and they were playing a show in Sacramento and Emilio was like, Hey, you want to go? Um, I like, I was like, let's drive out there. Cool. 
we go out there and there's like three people at this bar damn and awesome. uh, <laughs> it was it was great yeah i and like that i i'm too. not the biggest <laughs> like concert goer so yeah whenever like there's yeah. less people i'm like fuck yes it was wild it was really surreal to see a band that i've been listening to like every single day and all of a sudden it's just like us and them and like two other dudes at the bar that were like we're not mm-hmm. there for the show yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah um and <laughs> what else has been really getting me recently uh as far as like some tattooers that have been really adoring mm-hmm. there's a uh, kelly violet in the uk who does like really incredible floral black work stuff cool um and what else is there oh there's so much good stuff <laughs> uh, there's like this russian dude uh called parvik <laughs> on instagram who's like another tattooer that's like doing really wild stuff that I adore all people I want to get tattooed by. I tried to get tattooed by Kelly Violet and it wouldn't work. Hmm. Or I like send in the application, but didn't make the cut. How dare she? Did you send her? Did you send her uh, the yeah, self portrait? <laughs> send her the self portrait. That got me the odd nerd room thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Odd, odd nerd room definitely never asked me to model me for him. So <laughs> I guess, I guess he had enough. I don't think he saw it. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. What's what else you got? I can't <laughs> uh, think of any other names for things. So. Well, I have okay. a quick question, which is: uh, Is there any artist that you hate? Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's yeah. I'm a uh, not a big fan of Picasso. <laughs> Hell <laughs> I yes. Um, I like you know I like like to I like I like the guitarist painting a lot. You know, <laughs> have you ever seen the sh- the documentary uh, Struggle? No. Oh, highly recommend it. Plus, you've been talking about struggle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is—is is it all about Picasso? No, it's no. about this cool. sculptor, <laughs> but he calls Picasso Picasso, <laughs> which I loved. Uh, yeah, I feel like art in general like lets a lot of fucking assholes fly by, and like we're like, well, he was like he was really important, so <laughs> right. Um, you know, it's fine that he <laughs> abused women and was like right. a fucking total degenerate. <laughs> um, but yeah, there. Yeah, uh, God, who else? All sucks. There's so many people that suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm mouthing a certain person. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I think like, you might be the first one, first person to answer it. Just like, yeah, just this like is right off hate. the bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, everyone's always like, I don't really hate anyone. <laughs> You're right. And I'm like, no one, no one. You don't hate anyone's art. What the fuck? I told someone today, or I did like that question thing on Instagram, you know, and someone said something. I can't remember what, but it was like, they said something about their artwork being judged. And I'm like, yeah, he, if you put out artwork, you're you're putting it out there for the viewer to be able to interpret it and also judge it. Like it's yeah. it's not – there's not like a free judgment zone where you don't get to – like to pretend some work out there doesn't suck is just a stupid – There should be one where like – you should just make like an online gallery and just simply by viewing it, you like upvote it or whatever. Mm-hmm. You like, like it because it's like a non judgment zone. So just like, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to judge past judgment. You just like look at it and be like, cool. I looked at it mm-hmm. plus. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, it's, I think, I think that's a weird thing that happens with, with discussion, especially where like people are like, they play into the subjective thing, but only until it's about people or artists or musicians that they like a lot or concepts mm-hmm. they like a lot. And then mm-hmm. they're like, well, you can't judge it like that. You know, it's all subjective. Right. Um, and I think if you're if you're having a conversation, you have to be like, okay, we're actually talking about our own personal judgments. Right. Otherwise, it's you just like, yeah, you like that, and I like mm-hmm. this. Okay, cool. Conversation over. You know. Yeah. For sure. It's like one or the, the other. Yeah. Nothing's nothing safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd probably right. have to shout to, uh, for a favorite artist, uh, Joe Dorowski, the filmmaker. Okay. Like Holy Mountain. Huh. From uh, what? Holy, the Holy Mountain. Is yeah. that the one? Was I just talking? Is that the one with the fucking like mannequins in a room and like oh, a yeah. Jesus? All the and, Jesus mannequins. Like a bunch of dead people or something like that. I watched that There's once. So... My buddy Chewy made me watch it. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, the whole thing is just, it's jarring. It's <laughs> yeah. And like if you've read like Naked Lunch, 
ever. I was just talking to Lauren about that. William Burroughs. It's like kind of a, it's a similar experience where it's like, it takes you through the gamut of like, oh, this is beautiful and erotic. Oh, this is like disgusting and repulsive. And like, (laughs) what is this? It's a book called Naked Lunch. Naked Lunch. Who's the, the um, author for that? William Burroughs. That's right. He's like okay. one of the famous beat guys. And uh-huh. he's like famously like a long-term heroin user. And like a, he was like an older dude with like the beat generation. Right. Jack Kerouac and all that. Kerouac and all that, and yeah. He was like already a heroin addict. And all these like young people would come and like jump on board and be like, yeah, this is cool. Like beat stuff. Let's do heroin. And they'd like die off. And then he would still be like doing heroin. And then like a new group of people would come and then they'd like do the same thing. He would just like burn through him. I think he left to be like, I don't know how long he, he was an old dude. Was he? Uh, hmm. Yeah. God, it's dark. <laughs> he was I've, just known, I've known some people like that. Just, people through drugs. No, it's just people who couldn't keep like, he was like an anomalous person. And everyone's like, yeah, I could do that. It's like, um, you know, Wim Hof, he the, should, like Iceman or whatever. Oh, sure. It sounds like he should have one of those like Surgeon General warnings on him. Yeah, it's like, like hanging the, out with me. It's like, <laughs> you can't do what I do. Yeah. If you do, you'll probably die like these 30 people that have been yeah. trying. Um, uh, but, oh, and then like, uh, I didn't even talk about authors. Occasionally I read books and like <laughs> nice. a, a really good ones, the Illuminatus Trilogy. Uh, I'd highly recommend that book. Uh, Sounds like a conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a weird, jokey book um, by Robert Anton Wilson. Mm-hmm. You guys should definitely check it out. It's a very like surreal experience to read it, mm-hmm. but it's like a as far as like five favorite artists, I'm just stretching it to ten <laughs> for sure. Cross mediums. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm I into like it. it. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and then the one he hates is Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one I can think of. Yeah. One I, can uh, okay, I always talk shit about. about Pollock. That's yeah, my like, yeah, go-to. That's your go-to. <laughs> yeah. I, like, well, Pollock, wasn't he kind of a womanizer degenerate as well? Probably. <laughs> Pollock just never... I know he was super cool. I'm <laughs> just, just judging him on his art. He just <laughs> never inspired... Like, I just feel like it doesn't qualify that much like discussion <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah yeah except for every time i talk shit about pollock everyone people get mad people everyone's like, like well i, I kind of like, like him yeah. <laughs> i think it's also weird to talk about somebody in like you're like have to justify their art well like you didn't understand the time it came from and it's like mm. Mm, i mean i'm like explain it to me then that's uh, but my- you're but they weren't there either they're just like right. they're just making they're just following along with like yeah. the gallery curator or the museum curator who says like yeah. why they're important and right. what their place in history was and they're just like but even then point. it's like well i've done i've tried to understand it like you you know like the, the people are like i like it i'm like well i explain it to me because i've tried to understand why it's great and I don't understand it. So maybe explain it to me. It's like, well, you know, he set the pace or he let artists know. It's like, I don't know. I mean, sure. It seemed like it was inevitable. Like it didn't seem like he did it. It seemed like it was a natural. It, it was almost like a natural progression of art. Like yeah. it, it, if he didn't do it, someone else would. I think, yeah. And and also like, I, I think some Pollock paintings are cool when you see them in person because of scale. Like I think scale is really important. Like if you're in front, and that's part of the reason why I tried to paint some bigger paintings is because like I've noticed when you look at a painting that's big enough to where it takes up your whole field of vision, Mm -hmm. that's a way different experience than viewing a painting in any other way. So like a Pollock painting, they're all so big, so you can like be in one and you like are in the painting. And it can be a pretty weird experience. I mean, it's enveloping, you know, and same with like Rothko. Like I've actually had, I think Rothko's can be, Rothko paintings can be pretty tight. And yeah. Pretty enjoyable. Yeah. And, I don't, I don't compare um, the two because I, I, yeah, I think they're very different. For sure. I, I like, I've, I've never really had like a moment with a Pollock that was like super meaningful, but I have like right. enjoyed some of them. Like when you walk up really close to it and it's like the whole scope of your vision right. but like okay. rothko's i've definitely like you know felt a lot of tingles and like a lot of like electricity in front of yeah mm-hmm. and that's just, like generally how i uh judge paintings and like yeah i remember john see... wentz saying something yeah, similar he, yeah. Yeah. He, he sat in front of one for like a while and then he started crying <laughs> yeah so it was like, i've oh. cried in front of a bunch of paintings for sure and i like I've don't ever cried in front of a painting <laughs> you're not a painter then <laughs> damn it <laughs> <laughs> What am I doing? You gotta switch out. You gotta try your comedy. Sounds career. like I'm just not a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you, you like 
You yeah, crying? Back to, back to that pissing match. Like, I, I just your got, life like, wasn't hard if you're crying in front of paintings, <laughs> yeah. bitch. I just got like museum. Like you crying? Are you crying? They're like no, I'm not crying. So I'm getting my eyes. We just like, had an onion out. <laughs> They're like crying um, in front of uh, crying with music. <laughs> like a, I remember a I watched a documentary where like um, they talked about Van Gogh and one of his paintings. I think it was about like one of the museum, one of like the biggest collectors of Van Gogh's and how like the like like the Detroit Museum or some shit like stole them all or something. <laughs> Can't remember the documentary, but um, they talked about how this lady was standing in front of this painting and crying. And I just remember going like. What in front of a Van Gogh? <laughs> You're crying sure. in front of a painting? Oh. Like that doesn't even make sense. Like it didn't even like. It was like the. I remember when it, I heard it, it was so foreign to me. Like that's not a thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now I'm like, well, am I missing now? <laughs> Have you guys ever been real into painters and like like you know whatever like older painter museum painters that mm-hmm. like you loved and then now you can't stand? Hmm. Yeah. Dolly's probably like Dolly. I mean, no, you can't stand being in front of a Dolly. No, not 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 necessarily. I well, I don't know if I've stood in front of Dolly in time recently, but he's been like the one guy that like I've lost. Like I used to be so into him, mm-hmm. you know, like Same. where like that kind of is diminished. It, it, I'm not like saying he's shit. It's just like a weird thing where like it's it's lost the magic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's just from learning, like getting better as an artist really yeah uh yeah i wouldn't go as far as like hating or or like going from like love to hate but picasso (laughs) no but uh i can think of some landscape painters uh like do you know uh albert bierstadt he's the guy who painted like a lot of like yosemite paintings painted like a lot of giant um like epic uh paint like don't say epic that word's played out (laughs) Paint a hella lit. <laughs> yeah, much better. Much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, I was over at the uh, museum in Stockton looking at line deckers, and um, there's this room that had a bunch of his, um, a bunch of Beerstad paintings. And there's a few of them in there that, that hold up for me. Uh, but there's some parts of the paintings and some of them that are super goofy. Like he paint, like he cannot paint a figure. <laughs> and like, there's like this goofy ass looking deer that looks like out of proportion and a thing. And just looking at that stuff, it's like, Oh, this takes off out a lot of the magic for me when there's, <laughs> when I can loser. finally find like stuff in it that I could critique on it like, in that right. way. Yeah. Yeah. And even Dolly's thing that I was saying earlier, it's, it's like that. I think we've talked about it before, but it's like this weird thing where like, it's just based on his fans. It's like the Juggalos or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, when like <laughs> when undesirable fans latch onto something you love, yeah, like yeah. Rick and Morty or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Like, yeah. Rick and Morty is yeah. amazing, but uh-huh. all the people latched onto it are <laughs> right. awful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I, I have a. I guess I contain the hipster gene or something, where I just can't. It's like everyone, whenever anyone finds out you're an artist, I'm like, oh, you know Salvador Dali. And you're like. Yes, I know Salvador Dali. Go on. <laughs> Trippy, bro. And you're like, cool, man. <laughs> Trippy? Thank you. Bye. Uh-huh. That, like, I was talking to my wife uh, not that long ago, and we were like, the worst compliment anyone can give my art is that it's trippy. It's like this weird, like, hmm. take it back. <laughs> like, like, trippy is like tie dye. Um, <laughs> I think that's like being from California. For me, that's like, I would t- I would happily take that. Really? Yeah. Huh. I would happily take mm-hmm. a trippy. I mean, like, that one. We're looking at a nude man with nipples i just find hey, nipples no hey, see i would never call hands. it trippy i would just call it bonerlicious <laughs> well like it's psychedelic the whole thing is like very there's know, surrealist yeah. elements in it yeah. for sure but yeah, I but i guess that. that's just like a like how it's not like a trigger word for me mm. i guess yet <laughs> yeah i don't, know, I yeah, I don't look at it, that painting as being trippy though <laughs> I mean, I could see what you're saying, though. Yeah, there's like, it's like the nipples of it. <laughs> and, uh, Nipple-ish, some say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I could, I could see what you're saying. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe <laughs> I'm just, a, um, it's that, it's that hipster gene I contain somewhere deep inside yeah. me where it's like. But being from Sonoma County, I totally understand what you're saying with like, your art's yeah. trippy, dude. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. what that usually is associated with art. It's like a lot of patchouli oil. <laughs> yeah. A lot of tie dye color schemes. Yeah. Which... From the Midwest, there's like not, that's not like a prevalent, you mm-hmm. know, 
thing this out and about as much yeah. right it's more like if it's not sports it's like real fucking <laughs> oh you're just like some arty fucking like <laughs> girl boy or i don't even know what to call you yeah uh oh. so that's where i came from <laughs> yeah i could the fa word thrown about pretty freely still <laughs> yeah the <laughs> word being fa fart <laughs> Fossil Latino. I used to I used to love Monet painting. Oh, that's the other person I was gonna say, so, Monet. Mm-hmm. So Monet and Renoir, like uh my okay. my grandfather was like a chemical engineer and he retired and then like pick picked up uh, acrylic painting and like okay. he uh was super into impressionism and he would like rep he like was very methodical and kind of figured out like a method to to do these like replications or like you know master copies. So mm-hmm. I like, grew up with uh, Renoirs and Monets and mm. and um, a lot of like the ladies in fields with umbrellas and that kind sure. of thing. Um, before I like knew who the impressionists were and stuff, <laughs> right. and I like thought they were really cool, and I still think they're really cool. Uh, but then, and I mean, I remember going to like Paris when I was in college and uh, just being like the Musée d'Orsay was everything for me, you know? Okay, and mm-hmm. the the Louvre was cool. And the Pompidou, I was like, uh, most of this sucks. I don't <laughs> even the, know that museum. That's like the modern art museum there. Oh, okay. And um, and then, like, I don't know what happened over the last few years. Like, when I look at Monet's, like, a lot of times, I'm like, dude, this just looks like like vomit. Like, the <laughs> colors are so vomity. Yeah. And I remember, like, adoring these paintings. Like, specific huh. ones. Like, in the Art Institute in Chicago, like, I remember just, okay. like staring and sitting and looking at them and being like oh they're so amazing and when you step <laughs> back it turns into a different thing right and it's just like so jarringly like i hate the colors and <laughs> yeah. stuff now and it's just weird to observe like you know if the painting's the same like i'm different like the viewer is different right. mm-hmm. and uh and then at the same time van gogh has been the stronghold like okay. i still love yeah van gogh painting i love sitting standing in front of one yeah um but i think Sergio's it's just really... got like the weird van gogh where he's like hated it and loved no. it. yeah in a way <laughs> but uh for the most part i think i'm a french french impressionist hipster because i hate <laughs> like the popular <laughs> uh well i don't hate them but like monet's never really done much for me uh-huh. just uh, monet's corporate <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> Monet's the man. Who did he like? Uh, I'm trying to think, like French. I actually French impressionists. I'm few and far between. I love the American impressionists way more. Yeah, like who? Like, uh, well, mate, USA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> USA, <laughs> USA. <laughs> uh, well, I guess Sargent is considered an American impressionist. Um, uh, there's like Frank Benson. He's amazing uh some other guys uh there's a room at the de young museum that has a uh, that's full of american impressionists that's uh just go there yeah (laughs) anybody who wants to learn you can just go there (laughs) okay well they listen all over the world sergio so thanks a lot make a trip it's a world-class city san francisco (laughs) right and and come ride the trolley car yeah and then hunt someone down on fair oak street (laughs) sourdough bread Uh, did you want to ask your last question yeah uh what would you do with david cho money (laughs) oh I'd buy a couple odd nerd drum paintings for sure. <laughs> I'm surprised just... at how few people uh, uh, put art collection in their Dude, uh, I've actually, answer. okay, so this is mm-hmm. another, uh, I don't know if I should like give it away. I'm just going to give it away. But give it's a thing I've been thinking away. about a lot that I might do without David Show money. Uh-huh. Um, oh yeah, but I'll answer your question first. David <laughs> yeah. Show money, um, I'd probably try and replicate the world that Odd Nerdrum built for himself because that's huh. to me been one of the like most on it uh, models of life I've ever seen. Huh. And he has a really cool family life, uh, but this, he's created this whole world where like it's kind of like out in the middle of nowhere, but it's like beautiful. And he has this property with multiple houses on it, so he has like a family home that's like for him and his wife and his uh, two sons and two daughters. Um, and they have like a dog and stuff, but then they have like another whole separate studio with that giant painting. And they have this whole other little house with like the main studio and the, like mm-hmm. the guest rooms and stuff. Um, but having a place where you can like 
have other people that are into similar things philosophically and like art wise that can come and live there. And it's like outside of money. Like they didn't charge me anything to stay there. Um, they, I just bought my own food and bought my own art supplies. Um, and it wasn't about like anything with gain. It wasn't about like, they weren't gaining anything from me. I wasn't mm-hmm. like, and I wasn't going there to gain stuff from them. Like I, mm-hmm. I did go cause I want, like I adored his art. Sure. And I mean, there's definitely a part that, like a gross part of my ego that was like oh yeah like this will be a cool this will help me get in with galleries and stuff right. of having like this like resume line and mm-hmm. it's like but it really like wasn't that at all you know is like really going there to learn and to be with people that i like admired and um i would love to be able to like have a place where i could host people that were like interested in the similar fields and just be like yeah come live here like we'll like hang out and work because like i said i like learned working in proximity to other people so just to basically have like a compound that had like music studio equipment and art studio equipment and like tattooing stuff probably um on a beautiful piece of land by like with nice nature whether it's like water or mountains or anything like that and uh just kind of have this like it's kind of like a think tank where it's like if you're just in my brain if you're just like by yourself um working on your own thing you're just gonna run it's gonna run stale and it's gonna run in circles Mm -hmm. but if you bring these other people like you're learning as much from them as they are from you and you have this dialogue like we do this fun game where you go into this the library and pick out a couple art books and we'd all like have wine and we'd spread them out (laughs) and we talk about who's better than who and why yeah (laughs) that was just like a that perk josh's ear (laughs) yeah it's really fun it's very like it's cool because he's not like odds clearly like the master but he's not gonna just like lay it down like how he sees it and why and you should bend to like what he thinks he like wants to hear what you guys think wants to hear what i think and like wants to talk about what he thinks and like Mm -hmm. he's open and i'm sure he does like he's probably like less likely to be swayed by my opinion but like um i like the idea that like he was doing something he totally didn't need to do and and I couldn't help but think like, why am I here? Why does he? Why is he having me here? Why is he having mm. some like fucking twenty? Uh, at the time, I was like, I don't know, twenty five or twenty six. Why is he having some? He was seventy. He was like, why is he having some twenty six year old dude here who's like not that good at painting? Mm-hmm. Like, why? You know, right? And it's, uh, because like I have a fire in me about like wanting to do the thing, mm-hmm. and he has a fire in him wanting to do the thing. He's he's a harder worker than like anyone i know barring maybe emilio <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah and like he he would get into the studio at like you know 8 a.m every day because you'd hear him go up the stairs and it's like wooden clogs <laughs> and uh and he'd be there all day and like his yeah. family would come up and bring coffee and they'd like go have lunch and stuff but like it's just like where he wanted to be mm-hmm. and like that was probably wrote one of the most meaningful experiences that i've ever had because it's like kind of like the life model that i want mm. um so i think that's what i would do but it's weird because you need to like amass a lot of resources to do something like that you need to right. have like more than enough for yourself <laughs> right but it's like a, money yeah it's yep. like a pursuit of like wealth but for kind of like i think a good purpose you know mm-hmm it's not just like oh having a really nice car and having like all these luxuries it's like oh it's being able to like because I think like-minded people like I'm grouping you guys in with me. Like we're all kind of Mm like-minded, but the problem is like nobody in our fields can float other people. You know, there are some people with really beautiful energy and skill and drive, but, and it'd be amazing if you could just have, if you could provide for them to come like stay with you for sure for like six months and like, not like hovering around you, but just being in the same space and you can both create, nearby each other and like even the idea of like having philosophy and kind of having that discussion seems like a great thing like you you might have it in like little groups right of art Mm -hmm. friends but to have you know contradicting ideas and things like that and really working on I think a lot of artists, the I, the question of like why we do this and what's important and those kind of things and I think are like ideas we toss around all the time and to like, if you had a location where 
there's no ego. It's just literally trying to figure out those things I think would be awesome. Yeah. And it's like, not about like, no one's talking about Instagram when you're, right. when I was there, no one's talking like, <laughs> like it's so nice to be like unplugged from that stuff. And I'm so plugged into it all now. Mm-hmm. Like I'm so far from like where it was when I was there. But yeah, I think like, I don't know. You know, I think that it's, I, I wish that more people had more goals like that. And I feel like whenever anybody does have stuff like that, it gets taken advantage of when people have like a grant that you can apply for mm-hmm. or that kind of situation. It's like people want to get it to like, I don't know, just further themselves or just to like, it's cause I think it's just so brutal being an artist. It's hard to like think beyond yourself and beyond your own needs. For sure. Yeah. And then, and that I think going there was cool because it was the first time that you could see somebody that's like similarly minded, but they mm-hmm. have enough resources to think right. beyond just their own, like, how can I like not make worried things about, good for me like, and yeah. my people? It's yeah. like, okay, like once you check those boxes, it's mm-hmm. like, I want, like, I would love to be what able to do, do next. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to be able to like extend mm-hmm. out like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, me and Samantha still don't even have, like, we have a housemate here. Like, we don't even have our own place. You right. know? So it's like, the barrier is so brutal for stuff like that it's like you can't get extra space you can't have like extra rooms that are ready for people to come <laughs> right. stay and like work on their art i know it's from the outside looking in looking at this san francisco for san francisco, for san francisco you're doing amazing yeah. fucking massive yeah, yeah. Sick. um <laughs> uh, oh yeah that would be great <laughs> but oh yeah so the the non-david show thing that i was Think, oh, yeah, I've been the thinking secret. about my secret thing that i've been like <laughs> kind of scheming is that i've been thinking about um, another waiting to draw you exclusive <laughs> <laughs> uh i've been thinking i really want to do so there are so many painters that i like adore that i, I follow all their work and mm-hmm. a lot of people like are peers and the like people i talk to or are friends with or mm-hmm. some of them aren't that i just view um but you know I've, i like daydream about buying paintings from mm-hmm. them but like like resources aside i don't even like have like the right kind of wall space you hmm, know like right. i have my own sure. paint like i have all these fucking paintings like yeah like closing in on me <laughs> um so i've been kind of like well i do want to do something with all this energy so i've been thinking a lot about trying to do like a pop-up gallery show and maybe like just and uh and like kind of restructuring the whole business model because like the shop that i'm at my friend Haley adam owns and mm-hmm. she runs like she's too recently like most the tattoo shop thing is very similar to ga- art galleries where it's like 50 50 split mm-hmm. is standard and it's as you all know like fucking brutal and it's very easy to be like i this is bullshit i don't want to do it right um and so Haley, when she bought this shop uh is treating it way more like a collective um so we, we she offers like a flat rent or you can do like a, a percentage split but it's much mm-hmm. better than 50 50 mm-hmm. um there are no openings there by the way <laughs> uh and you know if it's because she's recently been in the other position where like she was paying way too much money out to people right that, so i think it'd be really cool to do uh, a pop-up show that like wasn't profit driven mm-hmm. you know i just i think it'd be really cool is like a way for me to like fan like buy my fantasy paintings be like Mm -hmm. oh yes these are my walls for like you know a week or a month or like a day or something like that and have like a really cool like group show and i I was just like kind of putting in the list all the painters that i know i'm like this would be a killer group show Mm. so i want to start looking into uh like what it takes to get a pop-up space and and also like um reformat it where like it take like a way lower like figure out a percent like 80 20 percentage or something Mm -hmm. like that and then like do a bar where like basically once it like pays for the gallery space itself i'd want it to like go to like a a, a, um a charity that like was cool Mm -hmm. so it just would not be like for my own profiteering it just for like i see doing a thing that i think is really cool and getting like painters together and kind of collecting all that stuff that's interesting yeah i think it's going to be called heavy trip (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so like you guys will probably get you know an invitation once <laughs> they figure out the space <laughs> right now for sure uh, uh, awesome yeah. <laughs> well yeah well we we went way over what we normally do <laughs> yeah but this was awesome yeah it's yeah. been super okay. fun conversation <laughs> uh-huh. uh yeah if anyone wants to find <laughs> you on instagram 
It's just <laughs> at Ian Reynolds. So it's mm-hmm. I A N R E Y N O L D. And <laughs> is that how you book uh, like tattoo stuff? So for all that, you can like my emails on the Instagram account. So okay. just email me and be like, I want a tattoo. And then I'll email you like a giant form that has all the instructions and like the ways that I want you to tell me about your tattoo idea. <laughs> yeah. You have to send them a n- nude portrait. Yeah, you exactly. You got to send me. A nude portrait of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we'll talk. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's been yeah, fun. Man. Uh, it's been extra, extra. I feel like we got turnt. <laughs> <laughs> extra strength. Daisy Cutter, double IPA. Shout out. Half Acre, Chicago. Yeah, man. This, this actually was delicious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Half Acre Beer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this has been Waiting Dry. If you're still listening, fuck off. <laughs>